Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Jesus, we declare that you are the lifter of our heads. Everything that you have done in this place, we give you the glory for it. For the miracles, the healings, the signs, the wonders. No man can do these things except God be with him. And Lord, we thank you for your presence. Without your presence, there is nothing we have. Without your presence, we have no message. Your presence is a life-transforming factor. And we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Prevail over us tonight, O oh God. We submit our spirits and our destinies. Let the refiner's fire build us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Walk up to two or three people. And just welcome them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's always a blessing. You cannot imagine how excited I am every week to bring us the word of the Lord. And you see, as a man of God, your responsibility is not to be celebrated or to build an empire for yourself as a true minister of the gospel your primary responsibility is to be an extension of the power the life and the glory of God let's look at the scripture Jeremiah 23 verse 4 Jeremiah 23 Verse 4. It says, And I will set up shepherds over them who shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. It says, And I will set up shepherds. over them and the primary assignment of those shepherds will be to feed them so that they no more fear they no longer are in dismay and that they neither be lacking saith the Lord and so when God anoints a man a minister of the gospel you are a servant to the people and your responsibility is to bring the fresh manna from heaven. Not just any revelation you read around, but fresh manna from heaven that is capable of building, changing, empowering the people. See, our ministration in the New Testament is that of the Spirit. Meaning, when you listen to a man who is ministering by the anointing, you are receiving more than information. Is that true? There is an activity. is a transfer. This is the most powerful part of the ministration of the word. That while you are sitting right now listening to me, there is a spiritual transfer. Something is entering your spirit. Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2. It says, And the spirit entered me 
when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet. Let me tell you something. Without the ministration of the spirit, every other thing we are doing is just noise. It is the ability to convey spiritual realities. Not just the English. Not just the grammar. Are you getting my point now? But there is an impartation upon your spirit man. And that impartation is what engraces you to walk in the reality of what you are taught. Without the spirit backing the word, there is no supply of grace to become. It says, as many as believed in him, even to them that believed on his name, he gave them what? Power to become. Not power to hear. Power to become. Meaning that when the word of God is taught in truth, it should not only bless you in terms of making you feel good. It should activate something in your spirit and make you become it. Because the word of God is not a thing. The Greek word word is logos. Right? And Jesus the word is called the living logos. Is a person. You can listen to my message, the living logos. Meaning, the ultimate desire of God is not for you to learn scripture. The ultimate desire is that through the instrumentality of scripture, light will enter you to become an epistle yourself. A written epistle, the apostle says. Hallelujah. So this is what we are here to do tonight. And I trust that the Lord will bless our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. I'll share with us a few thoughts that the Lord put in my heart. And I trust that God will help us. Hallelujah. 1 John chapter 5. One of the most tragic things that has happened to the body of Christ, especially pastors, preachers, is that we have lost the spirit of the word and i say this with a very heavy heart there's so much of talking going on sunday after sunday talking listen let me tell you the truth i'm not against the theological understanding of the word i'm not against the intellectual comprehension of the word but if all we have to give people is just information just rema in terms of new discoveries we will never be able to produce a victorious army hallelujah it doesn't take being spiritual to have information it just takes being passionate you don't have to be spiritual you don't have to wait on god to get spiritual information you see the distinguishing factor let me tell you something many people think it's just the new information that produces transformation in people's lives not necessarily not necessarily there is a spirit that is behind scripture one time the lord opened my eyes and when the lord opened my eyes i was in a vision and i saw a big like an ancient door or a gate if i will call it and when i looked closely i found out that that gate was made of many smaller doors actually a door many smaller doors are you following me now and on every one of those doors a scripture was written i saw the doors opening and closing meaning behind the letter behind the grammar behind the greek and hebrew and aramaic there is a spirit waiting to transform people the assignment the ministration of that spirit is the spirit of life the spirit of life not just the spirit of truth the spirit of life he gives life to the information you are hearing and then you are empowered to walk in its reality here and now so there is a lot of church going on there is a lot of conferences and activities and meetings but what we have done primarily as the church of the lord jesus christ is to reduce the ministration of the word to become an intellectual thing so it's just about theological dissertations or greek and hebrew somehow we have convinced ourselves that the more we read greek and hebrew and express you know the words in greek and hebrew and bring new words we think that the anointing is in the greek 
or the anointing is in the hebrew or the anointing is in the english or the communication there is a spirit there is a spirit that's the reason why you can hear a very powerful message and not be changed there is a spirit listen as i'm talking to you right now there is a spirit that is compelling what i'm saying to enter you so that you are persuaded that's why you can bring somebody that is hardened somebody that will even swear that i won't listen to god i won't do anything and when he sits down under this anointing from the prayer to the worship there is a spirit there is a spirit are you getting what i'm saying now it is that spirit that makes the person just keep quiet later on and all of a sudden you are seeing somebody that you know was stubborn probably even insulting the meeting and yet he's silent and then paying attention listen i want to convince you that without the ministration of the spirit everything we are doing in ministry is useless get this get this get this there is a wrong wrong understanding about impact and transformation many people wonder why you go to certain christian circles and there is hardly any change for 10 years people can be in a church but there is no notable transformation the only thing is that they know the names of everybody and while it's good to teach people things like um you know accounting timekeeping other secular principles here and there there is nothing in life that will replace the ministration of the spirit not just being full of the holy ghost not just receiving the anointing the ministration of the spirit the participation that at every point in your dispensing of the word there is a light there is a life that's the only way your words can transform people let me tell you something i am always aware that it's a privilege for god's people to be gathered here week in week out some persons have traveled from different states different regions to be here you cannot just come all the way to just come and listen to a a presentation of bible or just a religious bible study it's more than that that is the reason why let me tell you something it's good to listen to tapes it's good to read books but none of them can replace being in an atmosphere there is something about the atmosphere are you getting what i'm saying an atmosphere activates a lot of things there is something about you sitting down from the first time you come in and sit down even before the service starts proper there is already the ministration of, of the spirit going on convictions are changing ideologies are shifting death is being replaced by life the earthly is becoming the heavenly right that revelation listen let me tell you i've said it again and let me just use this opportunity to stress i absolutely believe that before jesus comes you see we've taught on the concept of immortality there's been a number of preachers who have brought that concept in the body of christ but what we have not taught people it is a scriptural concept the bible tells us death can be swallowed up in victory that the mortal can become the immortal that the natural the terrestrial can translate there is a provision in the kingdom that allows the natural to become divine are you getting what i'm saying now that divine dimension brothers and sisters is what we are called to demonstrate a believer must understand that there is nothing natural about you if you are not convinced about what i'm telling you you will never be able to do great things for the kingdom i know that here and there because of our humanity the attachment of this body somehow we tend to trivialize and we think that the activities of the kingdom must be done sensually and so we preach sensually we carry out all that we do sensually but there is a spirit there is a spirit that is the one factor that makes ministry different from business or makes ministry different from a, a seminar right that's the difference 
we have lost this spirit in crusades we have lost this spirit in conferences and you see that people sit down and they never live with that transformation can i tell you something the ministration of the spirit is not just about understanding a topic it's about the presence of god changing you meaning if we come here and all we do is to sing you should still live transformed because you see the the concept of transformation is not just about hearing words alone when you are sitting in an atmosphere something begins to happen at once your convictions there is a shift there is an alignment that makes you and postures you to begin to receive of spiritual things first john chapter 5 verse 11 and this is the record or this is the testimony that god has given unto us what eternal life the word here is zoe i know we talk a lot about it eternal life is not life after death listen listen eternal life is not life it's not the life you receive after death right what happens after death is the consummation the consummation right eternal life is the divine life god's own kind of life being supplanted in a human spirit and finding expression here and now in the earth realm and the quality of that life if it is of god it should be able to conquer anything in this life including death but it is the ministration of that life that many people do not understand so we in, in the kingdom let me read the, the scripture let me not go ahead of myself it says and this is the record that god has given unto us what so it is clear from scripture that it has been given but how is the technology of that life transferred it says and this life is where it's in his son next verse it says he that had the son had that life and he that had not the son of god had not life watch this the bible tells us listen my goodness the primary purpose of receiving jesus that means you're coming to Christ or you're coming accepting the Lordship of Christ in itself is not even the end. It is the spiritual system with which the life of God gets to you. The Bible says the life of God is hidden in the Christ himself, right? The Son of God. So the way you receive that life is to receive the Son of God. That's why we preach that's why souls must be won so it's it's not just trying to save people from going to hell alone it's the spiritual system with which the divine life gets to them i don't know if you understand what i'm saying now because if all that there was to being born again was going to heaven you would have left immediately you gave your life to christ so the technology is of course it secures your eternal destiny but the bible says god gave us life but that life is hidden in the son himself so that until you receive the son you cannot have life meaning you can be in church for years are you getting what i'm saying be around christian people for years but if you have not received the son it's impossible for you to have that life there are all kinds of life you can have your biological life you can have an occultic life sponsored by the agency of another spirit but if you are to have the very life of God, so way, God's quality and class of life, you must embrace his son. Embracing the father will not give you that life. Hear me? Embracing an angel will not give you that life. Embracing revelation will not give you that life. Are you getting what I'm saying? You must know what ministers that life. It says, and the life the office of the son of god jesus christ is the only means through which that life can be communicated how many people are in church they've been in church for years but they do not have this life of god because they have not embraced they are aware that the son of god exists are you getting what i'm saying they are aware that he died 
but they have not received of his life and the bible tells us that you receive now the question is what exactly is that eternal life what is eternal life really what is eternal life is it is it um is it a package that is given to us is it an inanimate thing that is just put in us is it a programming what exactly is eternal life i'll tell you eternal life is the presence of the eternal spirit of god in a man that's exactly what eternal life is eternal life is not a thing you are giving when you give your heart to jesus eternal life is the very entrance of the spirit of the living god to come and reside in you the extension as we call it in the greek alos paracletos the one who has come to be a representation of the ministry of jesus here and now in your life so my mortal body that if i come to jesus christ and i truly receive his son that life the only gate that's why jesus said i am the way not a way i am the way right so the spirit of life the very holy spirit can only find expression when you embrace the son this scripture is a clarification or an explanation of galatians chapter 3 right when you begin to read from verse 13 down the bible says christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law it says be made a cause for us look at me let me explain something to you do you know what makes the old testament old look up look up look up let me explain something to you do you know what makes the old testament old or when the bible talks of the old man he's talking about any entity that does not have the life-giving spirit is obsolete the spiritual language is old are you getting the point so it's not old because of time i don't know if you understand what i'm saying you know in the earth if if we bought this two years ago we say this is old this is new in the spirit old is only compared to its quality with respect to the presence of the holy spirit that means an ideology is old to the degree to which the holy spirit is not involved in it again the reason why we call the ordinances of the past it's not just because a new one has come if the new one came and the holy spirit is not in it it will still be old are you getting what i'm saying now so what makes a thing fresh or new is not that it is happening for the first time it is the very presence the eternal life of god that seed that conquers death that conquers weakness and the bible so designed the body of christ watch this the body of christ is supposed to be the vehicle that hosts the holy spirit that's why the bible says for this cause because people cannot discern the mystery some are weak some are sick and some do sleep is that not in your bible he said there is a mystery of the body the mystery of godliness the bible calls it that christ can dwell in a mortal body he said if you do not discern it you will be weak you will be sick and you can even sleep meaning that immortality is only a possibility because of the presence of the eternal spirit of god but the 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 factor is this um in the kingdom there are two realities i want you to write this down what i'm teaching you tonight is powerful you will walk in the glory of god in supernatural dimensions if you understand what i'm saying there are two realities that every believer contends with or works with number one is the reality in christ the reality in christ The beginning of the experience of the believer in the new testament starts in christ outside of christ there is no initiation 
into the realities of the new testament right the 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 whole new testament starts the pivot on which our ministration of life is built upon is in christ in christ in christ in christ never alone for with god all things are possible outside of him many things are not possible for in christ we are complete for in christ we are perfected are you getting the point now but then there are realities in christ for instance we are seated in heavenly places the bible tells us in christ the other reality is the experience of that truth here and now the experience of that truth here and now you can call it the reality in christ and then the experiential reality the bible tells us all through the new testament all that we have become in christ many times we do not understand why apostle paul when he makes certain statements about the believer he adds in christ and then we do not understand his communications some of us have been taught and maybe some of us sincerely misled that the moment it has happened in christ it means that the the experience of it is manifest here and now that's not true paul himself speaking to the hebrew church in chapter 2 begins to clarify right and he tells us certain things he tells us we do not yet see all things Let, let's turn there paul gives us a contrast that will help us in our spiritual growth hebrews are you blessed tonight i have the sun and i have eternal life he who has the sun has eternal life two verse seven and eight let's look at seven and eight hebrews two verse seven and eight it says thou hast made him remember paul was quoting from david it was david the son of jesse right the king who by revelation into the mysteries of the kingdom wrote this he said to none of the angels right has he said at any point thou art my son you know this and that he did not put the world in subjection to any angel and then the bible says talking about man now he said you have made him or in in, in uh, talking about jesus now in his earthly work he says you have made him a little lower than the angels the word there was mistranslated it's supposed to be uh angelio not necessarily like the beings but it's an expression of god himself many times you see the bible use the word angel to mean the very lord himself is that not true many times in scripture you will see that and uh, uh, certain times the word angel is written in italics meaning that there is more explanation to it it doesn't mean an angel like a messenger from the presence of the lord but god himself so it says the word there is supposed to be thou hast made him a little lower than eloha god himself the almighty so jesus lowered in rank for the purpose of coming to become a man in the earth right he says thou hast crowned him now he's talking about his coronation this was the coronation that david saw the lord said to my lord right sit thou at my right hand until i make your enemies your footstool so he says it here that thou crownest him with what glory and honor and you did set him over the works of your hand verse 8 thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet for in that he put all things in subjection under him he left nothing that he, listen i hope you realize that in the new testament you are not anything until christ is first it are you getting what i'm saying now so every time you see the bible talking about man find out whether christ has become that thing if christ has not become it because he must be the firstborn in all things meaning the dimension that the christ did not show us a possibility of getting there is no point trying to get there this is what i'm saying are you getting the point we can contend even more than the earth work of jesus because he said this verily verily i say unto you he that believes in me is that not in your bible 
the works that I do. In other words, he said, my eternal life is not compressed to four gospels. If I stayed longer, I would have unveiled more possibilities. Now, if you have my life, I authorize you to keep exploring the possibilities. And immortality is one of the possibilities in that life. Divine health is one of the possibilities in that life. The ability to live supernatural, though natural, is one of the possibilities. We must be able to stretch the possibilities. What are the contents of this Zoe life? What does it consist of? What are the benefits? Why should I want to receive the life of God? It's like a product you are marketing to me. Convince me why should I want it? What is the excellency of God's life over my natural life? Are you getting what I'm saying? So the Bible tells us, speaking about man, but that man was not just man like you. That man was first the man Christ. Are you getting what I'm saying now? I know that when you read this scripture, he says, who is man that thou art mindful of him? That man is not just talking about the natural man. He's first talking about the firstborn and all he has called into glory. Because he died as the only begotten son. Then he resurrected as the first of the begotten. And from there he had 120 other begotten sons. And from there there are many begotten sons. So Jesus is no longer the only begotten son of the father. By the spirit of adoption we have come into that sonship too. Are you, are you understanding what I'm teaching you? And so the Bible tells us that when you receive of that son, you receive of that life. That life is like a drug, the presence of the Holy Spirit. The moment he finds expression, certain reactions begin to happen. Watch this. He opens you up to the realities. So Jesus in the New Testament becomes what we call our pattern man. Jesus came and walked for three and a half years to show us an example of what the Zoe life is. Are you getting it? He was the first that opened us up to the possibility of the Zoe life. So when we saw the things that he did, we saw the mighty things that he did. The first that had the spirit without measure and he did so many things. And then he told us that uh -uh, it is profitable for you that I go. For if I do not go, I cannot send the comforter. He will come and continue. He will be an extension of my ministry. The Holy Spirit is to us today what Jesus was to the 12 disciples. Exactly what Jesus was to the 12 disciples. The Holy Spirit is to us today. That's the reason why there are no three thrones in heaven. There are only two thrones in heaven. But we agree that there is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit because the third throne is in us. There is a marriage that has been done never to be separated again. Are you, are you getting that now? It is Him that takes us to the God class. The presence of the Holy Spirit. Are we, are we understanding what I'm teaching tonight? So the realities in Christ and then our experience of that reality. The Bible says something very powerful here. It said, thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet, right? For in that he put all things under his feet, he left nothing that is not under him. At what point did this happen to man? Jesus himself said this. When he resurrected, what did he say? He said, all hail, he told the disciples. He says, all authority, exousia, delegated power has been given to me. When he was in the earth, all authority, let me say something that looks controversial. When he was in the earth, all authority and power over all the earth was not given to him. I hope you know. Absolutely. That's the reason why when he was sending the disciples with his power, he told them it will only work when you go to the lost tribe of Israel. Don't go outside that jurisdiction. Is it not in your Bible? So when Jesus resurrected, he now said, now, the scope, a coronation has happened to me. Right? The same way it happened to Adam. 
that dominion mandate has been restored and he said now all authority has been given he says go in that light in other words in christ the bible says that we've been made to sit with him above all thrones and dominions and power and every name that is named both in this life and in the life to come that's what the apostle was trying to explain there but he leaves a disclaimer he says but now everybody say but now are you seeing in christ all things have been perfected but now the experience of that reality he says but now we see not what is paul saying now paul you just told us now that in christ all things are finished is that not true when jesus hung on the cross he said it is finished look at this the thieves that were on the cross one was telling him ah paraphrasing now we saw you do a lot of miracles is it that you can't bring us down from the cross another person was saying when you get here so they were all thinking of a lot of things but jesus said today he was giving him a revelation that in christ there is an experience so in christ you are healed in christ you are prosperous is that true in christ you are free from every yoke and every curse and everything but then translating that experience it does not just profit you in christ gives you access but it does not make it a reality that you can handle now there is a system with which you can take that which is in christ and make it happen here and now i hope you know that a man on a wheelchair the price for his healing has been paid why is he still on the wheelchair i don't know if you understand what i'm saying every sinner in hell today from the time jesus came the price for their salvation has been paid why are they in hell as merciful as the mercy of jesus is are you getting the point now so there is a difference between realities in christ and the experience the realities in christ give us a window to the things we can claim and the possibilities that are there on account of the zoe life that we have but that does not mean because you saw it in christ automatically it will find expression here and now i don't know if you understand what i'm saying so you can read in scripture that by his stripes i am healed but here and now you do not see that perfected in your life right you've seen that we've been redeemed from every curse of the law and all the ordinances the, the handwritings and the and all the things that have spoken against us they've been nailed to the cross but you are watching right there at 25 there was a miscarriage your younger sister at 25 there was a miscarriage obviously a demonic pattern finding expression so did god lie no it's just that we have not been taught the system of making the realities in christ to become our reality is god speaking to us now so most believers just see it. oh in christ and then this is how they respond god forbid i have seen it in the bible i will never be sick i will never be broke and then you are getting broke you are getting sick because what you saw is not a lie but the ability to translate it here and now have many people not read that this sign shall follow them that believe in my name they shall what how many people are casting out devils how many do you know in my name they will speak with new tongues how many innocent believers do you know have struggled for years praying and fasting for the baptism of the holy spirit and seemingly it did not come how many times have you walked to a sick body with every confidence the bible says heal the sick right raise the dead cast out devils it says freely you have received freely give in christ in christ in christ how do we make that experience here and now because if we do not learn this eventually we are going to hate god because we think he's a liar a deceiver
I'm very concerned, let me tell you sincerely, at how distant we are from the things we talk about, the things we claim, and the experience of the same. Are you getting what I'm saying? There is too much talk in the body of Christ. We must humble ourselves and admit that there are certain things we do not yet understand. Because there is too much talk about who God is, what he can do. We make such bold statements about God. But when it comes to bringing God in the scene, bringing his power here and now, we begin to find theological explanations to excuse ourselves. The Bible says, for instance, Jesus Christ, the same when? Today and forever. How many preachers do you know have said that? How many of us men of God have said that? How many of us have been able to reproduce that reality? We must admit that there is something we are not understanding. We must admit that there is a dimension of spiritual reality we are missing. And let me tell you where we are missing it. This is it. Romans chapter 8. Let me tell you where we are missing it very seriously. And if we do not change, a lot is going to go wrong. Eight verse five. Eight verse five. In fact, let's start. Okay, verse five. Everyone read. It says, For they that are after the flesh do what? Do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Verse six. For to be what? stop the word carnal there is the word sensual it's not supposed to be it's not a bad word in terms of carnal doesn't mean immoral or maybe in a negative sense it just means that when you are carnal the limitation the scope of your judgment and your assessment of spiritual things is either intellectual scientific or sensual that's the limitation that's the circumference it says to be carnally minded whoever lives his life from that standpoint that your perspective about life is just how one plus one will become two it must be logical it must be scientific the bible says any man that thinks like that is already dying think about that it says for to be carnally minded is what death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So a man can watch oppression in his life and say, no, I went to school. What, what sort of oppression? I mean, if, if you fail, you fail. It's not any demon, anything. You see that? And then he does not know that the whole world lies in wickedness. That all that you see is not all that there is. There are many people, for instance, who look up and say there is no God because they are carnally minded. They, they reason from the sensual realm. Let me tell you, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, in a bit, and I teach you principles, we just finished having financial principles, but in a bid to break life down into an understandable format, we are gradually coming down from that height of spirituality to reduce God into a carnal mathematical formula. So there is a there is a mathematics that is responsible for healing there is a mathematics that is responsible for a and b and c and then we throw the holy spirit out and gather those informations and feel on the strength of these informations i can make it yet the bible says all scripture was inspired was written right by the inspiration of who the holy ghost the very spirit of life the spirit of truth the one that was sent to make the reality of this divine life true in us we have thrown him away and we have reduced everything if you cannot explain it like mathematics i don't believe i don't understand i throw it away it's gradually destroying us even our presentation of the gospel 
we are seeking to make sinners as though the gospel is not supernatural we try to beat it down and make it as mathematical as possible whereas the bible tells us that as you are speaking to people the law of the spirit of life is supplanting the law of sin and death how do you explain that mathematically so there are people carrying all kinds of demonic substances and all medicine can tell you is this is this this is that you see it happens at times there are women who based on the way they are formed they don't have wombs you just happen to be one of them god is faithful and all of that and then you sit down and believe that that's how it is the bible says to be carnally minded let me tell you the truth if we do not grow i'm not against intellectualism right there's always that saying that you should not be so heavenly minded that you are of no earthly relevance um that is true but if you are truly spiritually minded you cannot be irrelevant to the earth are you getting what i'm saying see i read books i i have studied a lot of people there is no man who works based on the truth of this scripture that will be irrelevant in this life this is the dispensation of spiritual men we have left dispensation of physical strength of giants we are we are gradually leaving the dispensation of intellectualism there are too many questions medicine cannot answer our governments are failing flawlessly because there is a principality that can sit down over a region and they try policies after policies here comes the generation of the spiritual men those who can tell the government you have done all you know to do can you finally pay attention to us those who change the world in the bible were not just foolish people just intellectualizing everything these were men daniel daniel for instance he understood that persia there was a spiritual host of wickedness around that territory and he knew the key to sustaining a smooth flow of that government was prayer the moment he prayed the spirits of the medes and the persians were disturbed and they used individuals to pass a government policy don't pray just for 30 days can you imagine just 30 days of no prayer and we will wreck babylon and the king passed it and daniel said no i'm a spiritual man i'm not just i, I know i'm intelligent i'm a government representative but i remember the prayer of my fathers I, 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 are you getting the point i remember the temple of solomon it was solomon while dedicating the temple part of his request he said lord whoever faces this temple and prays hearken to them and he opened his window towards jerusalem he said i know i'm intellectual but i'm not so stupid i know the mystery that brought me to this palace because i came as a captive there was a mystery beyond mathematics that brought me here and then they caught him i can imagine other people saying well you claim everything is god 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 now let god save you and the lions were roaring brothers and sisters that was physical the lion is a fierce beast but there was going to be a playing of the spiritual the superiority the excellency of the spiritual as soon as he stepped in an angel came said daniel so you have not forgotten you have not forgotten where you come from how many of us have forgotten you see that there are so many people talk about god right now they become irritated if you talk in church it's okay but you talk about god outside to people they just say kind i beg jare we are talking business you are trying to scatter everything as though god is the reason why all things will not work let me tell you if you ignore god in any aspect of your life get set for a shock because the realm of the spirit is still alive and strong how many ladies think they will marry because they are fine they get up around they don't pray they don't listen they say god forbid i know that i know what god gave me be celebrating there until you find out that you are 45 years and as pretty as you are because there there are realities in the spirit my brothers and sisters there are realities i got a testimony from i got a testimony from um administration we went for in kaduna that 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 blessed me 
one of the pastors um, came over to my place yesterday and he was telling me when i went for the meeting a woman was pregnant brothers and sisters watch this at least biology tells us i'm not a doctor there are doctors here um so how the child is supposed to be formed eventually for reasons they cannot explain the child started turning mysteriously no the child does not turn mysteriously something turned it let me tell you the oldest man in the earth is not up to 120 there are spirits that are millions of years you call satan a liar you are right you call him a deceiver you are right you call him a fool you are very wrong satan is old are you hearing that absolutely you know sometimes the way people just talk me god forbid my spirit can do this and that and that it's not all about this it's not and and while you are talking the realm of the spirit is just watching you how old do you know in bible days all of us are not even up to teenagers right now right yet the ancient spirit of god gives us a prescription about how to live and he says if you want life and peace be spiritually minded be spiritually minded do not let education do not let intellectualism money or anything take away that spiritual factor it has nothing to do with a man of god it is the key to life and peace we have thrown the holy spirit we feel he's only relevant in church right so when you go to your job and all of that people say now let's 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 be real let's be real while this the bible says i am the truth i am reality when god began to build and train me god made it a necessity and he let me know that forever in my at work the holy spirit will be and will remain the mystery behind any impact any transformation you see that for me the spirit of the living god is not just one nuisance that you have to embrace so that god will like you he is what you call eternal life if you are not aware of that be aware eternal life is not what he brings his very presence is the life of god jesus never became the christ he was the son of the carpenter he could die that's why his parents ran away with him but when the spirit of god came he made him the christ so when the bible says in christ it's not just saying in jesus alone in jesus yes but together with the spirit of life Look at what we have taught people about faith today. Look at the, the nonsense that goes on in the body of Christ that we call faith. Right? We teach people all kinds of experiences as if it's voodoo. That's why it's not working. Let me tell you, faith is a product of an encounter. When the Bible says faith comes by hearing, do you hear what you read? Answer me you see we need to examine it was talk it was a spiritual language it was not even just talking about hearing with the ear there is a quality of spiritual perception that an encounter brings and that's what produces true faith because when the bible says hearing and hearing by the word at that time there was no books like this king james had not authorized this so what did they call the word The days that are coming will be fierce. The days that are coming will be spiritual. Right now, have you seen the way the world is going lately? There is no embarrassment about spirituality again. Is that true? Everybody is opening up. It used to be in secrecy before. But right now, there is an open confrontation. It's like everybody is saying, Kai, I'm not hiding it again. I'm gay. Simple. Kill me if you will kill me. Up. It's not today. It has been like that another person saying it's not only you two of us too another person saying let me tell you i've not been a real christian this is my charm oh yeah you see everybody is confessing one by one one by one the meaning of that is darkness is about to reveal itself publicly 
right and it will bring everyone in a position to sustain a spiritual system to be higher than it or become a victim of it someone is building a house with blocks and cement when you are about to complete it and give thanksgiving the next week one small wind will just shake and you will come and not even see the two course of blocks it will scatter everything what sort of wind is that is it now wind started how many hurricanes are on right now and scientists say they watch from space that before the hurricanes comes they see images of spirits doing things from the sea minutes later you see all the animals running they are still spiritual except human beings disaster hardly meets animals there they run away and leave us we are there trying to make money we are dead and we are dying like chickens this is a spiritual generation listen this is a generation where it's no longer the issue of are you a pastor or not to be serious to be spiritually minded the holy spirit is the advantage of this generation i am convinced that we are the generation that will return christ yes i am convinced the bible specifically talks about a number of things that as we call it that omega generation there are certain happenings that will characterize our generation hallelujah that we discern spiritual things let me give you an instance hold on let me explain something how many people in church today have thrown away the sacredness of being a man of God and the fivefold ministry in an attempt to balance these bossy things men of God do on stage right there are so many people who now challenge their pastors challenge everybody are you the only one who will preach are you the only one we have a democratic church that can vote out throw out pastors because of policies have you read in first samuel i can't remember i think maybe chapter 15 or 13 one time when saul is that true when samuel told saul that they should go and have a solemn assembly is that true he was coming to make a sacrifice they gathered the people it's in your bible and then saul told the, i mean samuel said he's coming at so and so time and he didn't come and they waited for him they waited for him they waited for him after they waited for him people were scattering and the ego of the king saul was was at stake and he said kai this guy is not coming let me what offer the bond offering as soon as he offered the bond offering samuel came and he said well uh I'm, I'm sorry honestly i was afraid it's not like i wanted i mean too i didn't want to do it the people were disturbing me and since you were not around i thought since i was a king let me do it and samuel said you have done foolishly he said if you had allowed me to come god would have established your throne so it would have now be son of saul not son of david he said because you have done this the kingdom is taken to you for god has found another man after his heart just for violating the priesthood how many people violate the priesthood today and they don't care right all kinds of people any man can get up at any point lambast any man of god write any article and speak and believe he will go scot free go and read your bible It's because we have become carnally minded we don't even know what it means to be a man of god we think being a man of god is choosing the vocation of preaching right So that when one walk or the other doesn't work or maybe you read something that you felt is, is not lucrative you just say talk it's okay at least you are preaching you see this is our mindset so we do not we have thrown the sacredness that is in the altar there were times in the bible that when a priest and a prophet was not available to do certain things they left it there have you read about uza in the bible i'm showing you how we have fallen from understanding spiritual standards the bible says we do not discern the body of christ and many people have received casualties because we do not know how the body was supposed to operate right 
remember that there was a time when the ark of god was being carried back and then he was about to fall and an innocent man called uza for his sincere love for god wanted to run and just block the ark what happened to him he died instantly have you read your bible when miriam and aaron looked at their brother and said kai see you you are our younger brother don't open eye for us here is it only you that god will speak to huh we were all born by like this and that and moses didn't say anything what happened a cloud came at once miriam became as white as snow white as snow right and aaron aaron it was just because of the priesthood position that shielded him we have lost touch with spiritual mysteries because we want to do everything carnally when they tell a man that god is able to do a miracle for you and that in 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 five months god can open you to fountains of blessings you know they look around and say eh, i know it's not like i'm saying god cannot do it but you see we have to calculate how a will become b and how c will become d look at how people try to run ministry today right they try to run ministry in all kinds of funny ways look at how people try to generate finances for ministry when you see that you know that we have hopelessly lost touch with spiritual reality how did they build the tabernacle in the old testament because they were there for 40 years in the wilderness how did the supply come how did their clothes grow with them and their sandals today if we were before the red sea this is what apostle joshua selma would have done engineers where are you the spirit of bazalel and then we'll start constructing a bridge we are saying that if i'm a prophet in five years we'll cross this red sea see that that's how we would have worked that's how much we have reduced god that's exactly what we would have done and then the engineers come and we say okay let's start doing everything let's start the architects come let's start and then where are the kingdom financiers and then prayer department where are and then we keep praying and god says is that all to me and then after five years we say now you will cross the bridge slowly and while we are crossing we'll be singing choruses and when we reach there i will put a menu a monument prophecy walked into motion by apostle joshua selma shame on us because we call that the old testament we laugh at them we even say they are a shadow of us are you joking read hebrews 11 there are men who in their humanity we cannot even touch their shoes yet they, that's the old testament we are very quick to say it's old we have done away with it but we have not done one tenth of the things that they have done it's in your bible people invoke angels to use hailstone and stone their enemies when was the last time you saw that when was the last time you saw angels pursuing Boko Haram with hailstones? You are laughing. It's a serious thing. Look at bomb blasts happening on around. And there are men of God all around. And we claim we are anointed. They even put it on our posters when they invite us. Anointed man. Joshua Selman. Shame on us. Let me tell you. If this is what we think will bring Christ back, we are joking. How many barren women have we been unable to solve their problems? Look at, look at Jesus. Jesus inspires me. These guys who were with the guy that was crippled, they knew that if they could only see Jesus, that situation would be over. Is it not in your Bible? And they said, let's tear this man's ceiling. We will explain it to him afterwards. Today we brag and compare ourselves with ourselves. Is that true and do a lot of carnal things there is almost no difference between what we do and the supernatural or and 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 and, and that of unbelievers if i stand right now and i minister to sam and he falls under the anointing people shamefully write an article and say he's using witchcraft where did we leave our spirituality is it not in your bible that jesus with the divine light walked through people on a cliff they were trying to kill him he walked through them like a spirit where is that generation i wanted to show us a video it's just that um we we, we didn't have it i didn't discuss with the media would have shown us that video um of patricia king 
right i know they don't have it they may not have it now otherwise you would have watched the video where oil was coming directly from heaven real oil physical oil you would have seen the foot of real angels that you are not pressing into god doesn't mean some other people are not The divine life we shout the way we shout the way but there is nothing so way about our lives if they shoot me i die the way right every ep every epidemic is in the society and it embraces me the way now i don't say this in a derogatory way i'm saying this to challenge us i guarantee you if we learn how to receive that the way life you will watch HIVs get healed as if they do not exist. It will no longer even be a prayer point. The more I see people line up for counseling, I don't rejoice to say, wow, it means I'm an anointed man. I look at people line up for counseling and I bleed in my heart because I say, shame on us. It means we are doing very small. A sign that we are doing so much is that the people in the church should be so impacted they should now go out and begin to transform people but today we say wow i had a crowd hundreds of people to to mean that ministry is moving forward wrong parameters because there is nothing spiritual that we can use to gauge our standard who is god speaking to tonight where have you reduced god let me tell you one day maybe i'll come in the night i'll bring a chair here one coin on here We'll just sit down and we'll discuss and i will share with you some of my encounters when god began to work with me some of you if i share it as you are seated now you've seen me every day you've even eaten with me but you will not believe it because you say it's a lie encounters with angels all kinds of spiritual encounters because i believe in him i believe in him i'll never forget the first time i had the audible voice of god let me tell you something if you hear god you must have faith you see that it's not about maybe i'm trying to calculate you must have faith listen at the at the mount of transfiguration when elijah and moses appeared what did peter do peter recognized them immediately had he ever seen them who told him he said what i see three people it's a privilege that means i have questions to ask let's prepare three beds one for elijah one for moses because he thought they came to pass the night with jesus and discuss a lot of things when an angel appeared to mary mary was not afraid meaning was a natural occurrence it was the salutation she was afraid of not the angel today if somebody says he has seen an angel say, i beg jerry angel where you think angels are just like that Yet the Bible says, are they not ministering spirit? I'm showing you why we have become carnal. We threw away the Holy Spirit. We are gradually kicking the Holy Spirit out in a bid to do what we call word, 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 word. Right? Word, word, word. Just the word. Give it the word and, and don't give me anything else. There are even people who reject Jesus and say, just give me Bible. Give me Bible, Jesus, go. Once it's not Bible, even Jesus should go away. And the devil likes that theology if it is bible you want zondervan keep publishing new versions keep coming out and we keep carrying the bible and we convince ourselves that because we are holding bible and reading it we are growing in the world but we are becoming carnal that's why death is rampant it is that carnality do you know that our forefathers were more spiritual than us is that true witchcraft in the village is not a shock an average young boy in the village has seen some form of witchcraft so if they tell him somebody can appear and disappear he will believe it but in the church ah if i disappear here now now in this place finally the article will be complete the article you have been writing you will pay new nigeria tomorrow morning to publish it confirm hey which is on suit Yet we talk about the mighty army that is rising up. Mighty army. Where is the army? 
truly there is an army that is rising up but let me tell you our level of transformation is slow we are hardly becoming like the christ there is there is a standard that has been measured for us and the greatest of us is just a step out of the cave we must sustain a technology to hurry up and to catch up the church called spiritual growth prosperity since every other spiritual thing like healing and the rest is very hard we have left it and then remedied it with money so when i come in with a nice suit and i come and say am i is the word not working let me tell you the truth if that's what you think you go to a meeting where you see people popping champagne of hundred thousand which which pastor or which christian can hardly do that in nigeria there are people lavishing resources we have reduced ourselves and match our spirituality so if i come out with a jeep if there are five jeeps that are lined up here you say man god is in koinonia what five jeeps is here oh. in bible days men were called generals on the strength of heavy capacity in the spirit one man will threaten a nation not a politician but elijah not in a radio station he made a declaration to the heavens he vetoed the prayer request of everybody and said me i speak there will not be rain not god revealed to me i stand in my office over this territory and i said there will not be rain and he went to bed it was by sorcery jezebel found out he was the one and she swore to remove his head how many men of god have disgraced themselves on television how many men of god have disgraced their ministries in newspapers how many men of god predicted that 2012 is his rapture huh how many you saw we, we we just showed the whole world that we have been lying for years instead of even keeping it quietly to now be pressing for forgiveness and transformation we now went on air to publicly embarrass ourselves It's gotta be more, gotta be more. It's gotta be more than this. It's gotta be more, gotta be more. It's gotta be more. Today, people talk about the anointing, but they do not even know what the anointing is. No, at all. I tell you, many people do not even know what the anointing is. We have reduced God to prosperity. Because that's the only physical show of progress. Right? We have left the harder ones like healing and speaking over nations and forcefully bringing people to the cross. Those ones are very intricate. You can't fake those ones. So we have thrown them and then we ran to the easy ones. We make money and make two and two together and then we now say it's working. It's not working. No. We have to be, admit this thing and press into God. Part of my goals in life is to so align to the Holy Spirit that my life becomes a true expression of the divine life. I was told about one or two cases of some women here in this place who are here right now. Right? I think one of them is a miscarriage issue. I'll minister to her shortly. And then another person. The question is, if that happens in your church, what will you tell them? I know what you will tell them. I know what you will tell them. You don't have faith. If you have faith, you will provoke my oil. There's no problem with my own end. It's you that don't, we are liars. We are must be a generation that can present Christ to the world in his fullness. I truly believe I will be part of those people with all my heart. I desire to see the fullness of his glory find expression. I have received the son. And that means I believe that his life is in me. But where is that life? We are only seeing fragments of it fragments of it but there is a revival that is coming this will be a revival of the spirit himself when the spirit of god will start schooling people by ourselves because all the schools of ministry we have done and everything we have ended up making people just like us the spirit of god in these days the lord has started revealing this to me throughout last week i've been under an intense anointing right from when i finished the, the financial series and the holy ghost told me he will personally begin to teach people 
as many who are interested there will be such a move of the spirit i'm telling you god will begin to tutor people and the more you see him the more you will know preachers are lying the more you encounter him the more, the more you will know that people are sincere but liars the lord is revealing this to me this is how god trained me god taught me so many things secrets in the bible there are times that i will the lord will be visiting me and his presence physical cloud i'm not talking of some spooky vision that people lie about real cloud like a fog will fill the room and i'll lie down there and the pages of my bible will be turning by themselves to certain scriptures i hope you believe it hallelujah we have reduced god we have reduced god is this is too bad to an extent that if somebody on a wheelchair stands up people look and they say kai who knows him look at how you put pressure on men of god people come for miracle service we have to be asking them where are you coming from so that you don't think that they organize things around it's a shame it's a shame It says he that has a son has life has life look at what jesus did an example of what we should become jesus five loaves and two fish he multiplied it everywhere he went he was doing good everywhere we go we are doing bad or at least average and yet we claim to have his spirit there are people who even brag and say i have the spirit of jesus without measure where is it where, where did you keep the spirit of Jesus without measure? There is no sincerity in our pursuit of God. We tell a lot of lies. I was teaching a school of ministry students yesterday. And I was telling them that the reason why many people do not grow is because we lie. I can fake it now and say there's somebody here. You have a stomach ache and somebody will arise. And because I did not minister in truth, my lie will... Do you know that you can lie for a long time until it looks like the truth to you? How many people don't pray they come on stage and run their mouth and speak nonsense i am a prayer warrior but there is a there is a touch of the throne that comes on every man of prayer it follows their teachings it's like a spirit it's like a finishing on your words if you are a man of the altar it truly that fire is not just the shouting there is a communication of life how many people claim they are prayer warriors and they stand and speak and while they are speaking you die spiritually until you start sleeping physically because there is no life that is coming the question god is asking you is why did you stop believing in me many of us did not start like this god is speaking to us many of us when we started we were spiritual we meant business with god eventually as we started getting some results in our lives we have thrown the holy spirit out now we are left with letters convincing ourselves that because we are reading scriptures it means we are growing spiritually do you not see the need in our world today there are people with hiv cancer there are people in need of the zoe life that we claim to have we claim to have zoe i am an ambassador of the kingdom then demonstrate it he said when i came to you i did not come in the excellency or the eloquence of speech because i know the danger that it can do to you but when i came i came in a demonstration i came to prove to you i came to bring the jesus of your bible to be made manifest here and now ah, this is the theme of my life that everywhere i go i become an expression of his reality that no matter how you do not believe in God, when I show up, you can at least see something that convinces you of the reality of the Christ. Right now, demons sit in our congregations while we are gyrating and singing and worshiping. They are joining us in the worship because there is absolutely nothing that can kick them out. When we finish, we say, Kai, it was a wonderful service. Together, let's share the grace. And they join us and share the grace. Demons mock men of God all around. 
and we give all kinds of explanations for it do you not see what is happening to the body of christ but the holy ghost revealed this to me that in the seasons that are coming personally he's going to start leading men into strange encounters and tutorials where in a sleep you will see a strange man come to you and begin to tell you right i want to teach you the mystery of spiritual power and when you wake up in the morning like like solomon an intelligence you cannot account for all of a sudden this is how this is how god trained me oh this is how god trained me i remember a time in my life when i would sleep in the night this happened for almost two months and at least one of god's generals will come to me in dreams explaining to me their perspectives i remember many of the people that have browsed and have taken from their lives i remember a man called peter tan the first time i would meet that man was in a vision the first time i ever saw apostle paul he was in a vision i didn't even know he was the one i just saw a man who was short and bald headed after speaking to me then i asked who are you and he didn't respond to me he moved a while and then he turned and said paul the first time i would see the picture on the internet i said this is the man i saw yet we know we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses the name koinonia was a revelation it's not that i just sat down and said kai what should we call it now no no to the word the word of god is a mystery to his sons a revelation for he has made us a kingdom and priests to reign on the earth forever join us as we expose you to this revelation through god's servant apostle joshua selman our eternity network international replicating the fullness of god's life on earth Make your presence known in an unusual way tonight. Let the saints be equipped. Let the church be mature. Let mighty men and women of God arise, O oh God, from this place. Reveal your glory. Multifaceted dimensions cause our hearts to be enlightened let your word break every stronghold tonight let the sick be healed and let the oppressed be delivered let our destinies change forever in the name of Jesus it's in your glory I will stand and lift my hand. It's in your glory I'll receive every miracle you have for me. It's in this glory we will stand We will stand and lift our hands It's in your glory we'll receive Every miracle you have And Abalaka Brandos. He who has the Son has eternal life. We have the Son, 
So we have eternal life Yes, we have the Son So we have eternal life We who have the Son So I have eternal life. I bless your holy name, sing your praises forever, and I forget not your benefit. Bless your holy name, sing your praises forever, I forget not your enemy. Hallelujah. Lord, we cry for a visitation. We do not want to be so familiar with your presence. We cry for a fresh Mighty one, we cry. We cry, Abba Father, hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Sing, we cry, Abba Father, hallowed. We cry our Father, Your kingdom come, I cry, I'm a father. I'm a father. <laughs> But had a shield for me my glory and the lifter of my head but thou Lord had a shield for me my glory and the lifter of my head lift your voices and sing but thou, Lord, had a shield for me, my glory and the litter of my head. But thou, Lord, had a shield for me, my glory and the litter of my head. Just one 
one more time. Ever down, Lord, I'll shield for me my glory and the litter of my head. Jesus, we declare that you are the lifter of our heads. Everything that you have done in this place, we give you the glory for it. For the miracles, the healings, the signs, the wonders. No man can do these things except God be with him. And Lord, we thank you for your presence. Without your presence, there is nothing we have. Without your presence, we have no message. Your presence is the life transforming factor. And we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Prevail over us tonight, O oh God. We submit our spirits and our destinies. Let the refiner's fire build us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Walk up to two or three people. Just welcome them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's always a blessing. You cannot imagine how excited I am every week to bring us the word of the Lord. And you see, as a man of God, your responsibility is not to be celebrated or to build an empire for yourself as a true minister of the gospel your primary responsibility is to be an extension of the power the life and the glory of God let's look at the scripture Jeremiah 23 verse 4 Jeremiah 23 Verse 4. It says, And I will set up shepherds over them who shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. It says, And I will set up shepherds. over them and the primary assignment of those shepherds will be to feed them so that they no more fear they no longer are in dismay and that they neither be lacking saith the lord and so when god anoints a man a minister of the gospel you are a servant to the people and your responsibility is to bring the fresh manna from heaven. Not just any revelation you read around, but fresh manna from heaven that is capable of building, changing, empowering the people. See, our ministration in the New Testament is that of the Spirit. Meaning, when you listen to a man who is ministering by the anointing, you are receiving more than information. Is that true? There is an activity. It's a transfer. This is the most powerful part of the ministration of the word. 
that while you are sitting right now listening to me there is a spiritual transfer something is entering your spirit ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2 it says and the spirit entered me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet let me tell you something without the ministration of the spirit every other thing we are doing is just noise it is the ability to convey spiritual realities not just the english not just the grammar are you getting my point now but there is an impartation upon your spirit man and that impartation is what engraces you to walk in the reality of what you are taught without the spirit backing the word there is no supply of grace to become it says as many as believed in him even to them that believed on his name he gave them what power to become not power to hear power to become meaning that when the word of god is taught in truth it should not only bless you in terms of making you feel good it should activate something in your spirit and make you become it because the word of god is not a thing the greek word word is logos right and jesus the word is called the living logos is a person you can listen to my message the living logos meaning the ultimate desire of god is not for you to learn scripture the ultimate desire is that through the instrumentality of scripture light will enter you to become an epistle yourself a written epistle the apostle says hallelujah so this is what we are here to do tonight and i trust that the lord will bless our hearts in the name of jesus christ I'll share with us a few thoughts that the Lord put in my heart and I trust that God will help us hallelujah first John chapter 5 one of the most tragic things that has happened to the body of Christ especially pastors preachers is that we have lost the spirit of the word and i say this with a very heavy heart there's so much of talking going on sunday after sunday talking listen let me tell you the truth i'm not against the theological understanding of the word i'm not against the intellectual comprehension of the word but if all we have to give people is just information just Rema in terms of new discoveries we will never be able to produce a victorious army hallelujah it doesn't take being spiritual to have information it just takes being passionate you don't have to be spiritual you don't have to wait on god to get spiritual information you see the distinguishing factor let me tell you something many people think it's just the new information that produces transformation in people's lives not necessarily not necessarily there is a spirit that is behind scripture one time the lord opened my eyes and when the lord opened my eyes i was in a vision and i saw a big like an ancient door or a gate if i will call it and when i looked closely i found out that that gate was made of many smaller doors actually a door many smaller doors are you following me now and on every one of those doors a scripture was written i saw the doors opening and closing meaning behind the letter behind the grammar behind the greek and hebrew and aramaic there is a spirit waiting to transform people the assignment the ministration of that spirit is the spirit of life the spirit of life not just the spirit of truth the spirit of life he gives life to the information you are hearing and then you are empowered to walk in its reality here and now so there is a lot of church going on there is a lot of conferences and activities and meetings but what we have done primarily as the church of the lord jesus christ is to reduce the ministration of the word to become an intellectual thing so it's just about theological dissertations 
or Greek and Hebrew. Somehow we have convinced ourselves that the more we read Greek and Hebrew and express, you know, the words in Greek and Hebrew and bring new words, we think that the anointing is in the Greek or the anointing is in the Hebrew or the anointing is in the English or the communication. There is a spirit. There is a spirit. That's the reason why you can hear a very powerful message and not be changed. There is a spirit. Listen, as I'm talking to you right now, there is a spirit that is compelling what I'm saying to enter you so that you are persuaded. That's why you can bring somebody that is hardened, somebody that will even swear that I won't listen to God, I won't do anything. And when he sits down under this anointing, from the prayer to the worship, there is a spirit. There is a spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying now? It is that spirit that makes the person just keep quiet later on. And all of a sudden, you are seeing somebody that you know was stubborn. Probably even insulting the meeting. And yet he's silent. And then paying attention. Listen. I want to convince you that without the ministration of the spirit, everything we are doing in ministry is useless. Get this. Get this get this there is a wrong wrong understanding about impact and transformation many people wonder why you go to certain christian circles and there is hardly any change for 10 years people can be in a church but there is no notable transformation the only thing is that they know the names of everybody and while it's good to teach people things like um you know accounting timekeeping other secular principles here and there there is nothing in life that will replace the ministration of the spirit not just being full of the holy ghost not just receiving the anointing the ministration of the spirit the participation that at every point in your dispensing of the word there is a light there is a life that's the only way your words can transform people let me tell you something i am always aware that it's a privilege for god's people to be gathered here week in week out some persons have traveled from different states different regions to be here you cannot just come all the way to just come and listen to a a presentation of bible or just a religious bible study it's more than that that is the reason why let me tell you something it's good to listen to tapes it's good to read books but none of them can replace being in an atmosphere there is something about the atmosphere are you getting what i'm saying an atmosphere activates a lot of things there is something about you sitting down from the first time you come in and sit down even before the service starts proper there is already the ministration of, of the spirit going on convictions are changing ideologies are shifting death is being replaced by life the earthly is becoming the heavenly right that revelation listen let me tell you i've said it again and let me just use this opportunity to stress I absolutely believe that before Jesus comes, you see, we've taught on the concept of immortality. There's been a number of preachers who have brought that concept in the body of Christ. But what we have not taught people, it is a scriptural concept. The Bible tells us death can be swallowed up in victory. That the mortal can become the immortal. That the natural, the terrestrial can translate. There is a provision in the kingdom that allows the natural to become divine are you getting what i'm saying now that divine dimension brothers and sisters is what we are called to demonstrate a believer must understand that there is nothing natural about you if you are not convinced about what i'm telling you you will never be able to do great things for the kingdom i know that here and there because of our humanity the attachment of this body somehow we tend to trivialize and we think that the activities of the kingdom must be done sensually and so we preach sensually we carry out all that we do sensually 
but there is a spirit there is a spirit that is the one factor that makes ministry different from business or makes ministry different from a, a seminar right that's the difference we have lost this spirit in crusades we have lost this spirit in conferences and you see that people sit down and they never live with that transformation can i tell you something the ministration of the spirit is not just about understanding a topic it's about the presence of god changing you meaning if we come here and all we do is to sing you should still live transformed because you see the the concept of transformation is not just about hearing words alone when you are sitting in an atmosphere something begins to happen at once your convictions there is a shift there is an alignment that makes you and postures you to begin to receive of spiritual things first john chapter 5 verse 11 And this is the record or this is the testimony that God has given unto us what? Eternal life. The word here is Zoe. I know we talk a lot about it. Eternal life is not life after death. Listen, listen. Eternal life is not life. It's not the life you receive after death. Right? What happens after death is the consummation. The consummation. Right? eternal life is the divine life god's own kind of life being supplanted in a human spirit and finding expression here and now in the earth realm and the quality of that life if it is of god it should be able to conquer anything in this life including death but it is the ministration of that life that many people do not understand so we in the kingdom let me read the, the scripture let me not go ahead of myself it says and this is the record that god has given unto us what so it is clear from scripture that it has been given but how is the technology of that life transferred it says and this life is where it's in his son next verse it says he that had the son had that life and he that had not the son of god had not life watch this the bible tells us listen my goodness the primary purpose of receiving jesus that means you're coming to christ or you're coming accepting the lordship of christ in itself is not even the end it is the spiritual system with which the life of god gets to you the bible says the life of god is hidden in the christ himself right the son of god so the way you receive that life is to receive the son of god that's why we preach that's why souls must be won so it's it's not just trying to save people from going to hell alone it's the spiritual system with which the divine life gets to them i don't know if you understand what i'm saying now because if all that there was to being born again was going to heaven you would have left immediately you gave your life to christ so the technology is of course it secures your eternal destiny but the bible says god gave us life but that life is hidden in the son himself so that until you receive the son you cannot have life meaning you can be in church for years are you getting what i'm saying be around christian people for years but if you have not received the son it's impossible for you to have that life there are all kinds of life you can have your biological life you can have an occultic life sponsored by the agency of another spirit but if you are to have the very life of god so way god's quality and class of life you must embrace his son embracing the father will not give you that life hear me embracing an angel will not give you that life embracing revelation will not give you that life are you getting what i'm saying you must know what ministers that life. it says and the life the office of the son of god jesus christ is the only means through which that life 
can be communicated how many people are in church they've been in church for years but they do not have this life of god because they have not embraced they are aware that the son of god exists are you getting what i'm saying they are aware that he died but they have not received of his life and the bible tells us that you receive now the question is what exactly is that eternal life what is eternal life really what is eternal life is it is it um is it a package that is given to us is it an inanimate thing that is just put in us is it a programming what exactly is eternal life i'll tell you eternal life is the presence of the eternal spirit of god in a man that's exactly what eternal life is eternal life is not a thing you are giving when you give your heart to jesus eternal life is the very entrance of the spirit of the living god to come and reside in you the extension as we call it in the greek alos paracletos the one who has come to be a representation of the ministry of jesus here and now in your life so my mortal body that if i come to jesus christ and i truly receive his son that life the only gate that's why jesus said i am the way not a way i am the way right so the spirit of life the very holy spirit can only find expression when you embrace the son this scripture is a clarification or an explanation of galatians chapter 3 right when you begin to read from verse 13 down the bible says christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law it says be made a cause for us look at me let me explain something to you do you know what makes the old testament old look up look up look up let me explain something to you do you know what makes the old testament old or when the bible talks of the old man he's talking about any entity that does not have the life-giving spirit is obsolete the spiritual language is old are you getting the point so it's not old because of time i don't know if you understand what i'm saying you know in the earth if if we bought this two years ago we say this is old this is new in the spirit old is only compared to its quality with respect to the presence of the holy spirit that means an ideology is old to the degree to which the holy spirit is not involved in it again the reason why we call the ordinances of the past is not just because a new one has come if the new one came and the holy spirit is not in it it will still be old Are you getting what i'm saying now so what makes a thing fresh or new is not that it is happening for the first time it is the very presence the eternal life of god that seed that conquers death that conquers weakness and the bible so designed the body of christ watch this the body of christ is supposed to be the vehicle that hosts the holy spirit that's why the bible says for this cause because people cannot discern the mystery some are weak some are sick and some do sleep is that not in your bible he said there is a mystery of the body the mystery of godliness the bible calls it that christ can dwell in a mortal body he said if you do not discern it you will be weak you will be sick and you can even sleep meaning that immortality is only a possibility because of the presence of the eternal spirit of god but the 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 factor is this um in the kingdom there are two realities i want you to write this down what i'm teaching you tonight is powerful you will walk in the glory of god in supernatural dimensions if you understand what i'm saying there are two realities that every believer contends with or walks with number one is the reality in christ 
the reality in Christ the beginning of the experience of the believer in the New Testament starts in Christ outside of Christ there is no initiation into the realities of the New Testament right the the, the whole New Testament starts the pivot on which our ministration of life is built upon is in Christ in Christ in Christ in Christ never alone for with God all things are possible outside of him many things are not possible for in Christ we are complete for in Christ we are perfected are you getting the point now but then there are realities in Christ for instance we are seated in heavenly places the Bible tells us in Christ the other reality is the experience of that truth here and now the experience of that truth here and now you can call it the reality in Christ and then the experiential reality the Bible tells us all through the New Testament all that we have become in Christ many times we do not understand why apostle paul when he makes certain statements about the believer he adds in christ and then we do not understand his communications some of us have been taught and maybe some of us sincerely misled that the moment it has happened in christ it means that the the experience of it is manifest here and now that's not true paul himself speaking to the hebrew church in chapter 2 begins to clarify right and he tells us certain things he tells us we do not yet see all things Let, let's turn there paul gives us a contrast that will help us in our spiritual growth hebrews are you blessed tonight i have the sun and i have eternal life he who has the Son has eternal life. Two verses, seven and eight. Let's look at seven and eight. Hebrews two, verse seven and eight. It says, Thou hast made him. Remember, Paul was quoting from David. It was David, the son of Jesse, right? The king. Who by revelation into the mysteries of the kingdom wrote this? He said, to none of the angels, right? Has he said at any point, thou art my son, you know, this and that. He did not put the world in subjection to any angel. And then the Bible says, talking about man now. He said, you have made him, or in, in, in uh, talking about Jesus now in his earthly work. He says, you have made him a little lower than the angels. The word there was mistranslated it's supposed to be uh, angelio not necessarily like the beings but it's an expression of god himself many times you see the bible use the word angel to mean the very lord himself is that not true many times in scripture you will see that uh, and certain times the word angel is written in italics meaning that there is more explanation to it it doesn't mean an angel like a messenger from the presence of the lord but god himself so it says the word there is supposed to be thou has made him a little lower than eloha god himself the almighty so jesus lowered in rank for the purpose of coming to become a man in the earth right it says thou has crowned him now he's talking about his coronation this was the coronation that david saw the lord said to my lord right sit thou at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool so he says it here that thou crownest him with what glory and honor and you did set him over the works of your hand verse 8 thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet for in that he put all things in subjection under him he left nothing that he, listen I hope you realize that in the New Testament you are not anything until Christ is first it are you getting what i'm saying now so every time you see the bible talking about man find out whether christ has become that thing if christ has not become it because he must be the firstborn in all things meaning the dimension that the christ did not show us a possibility of getting 
there is no point trying to get there this is what i'm saying are you getting the point we can contend even more than the earthwork of jesus because he said this verily verily i say unto you he that believes in me is that not in your bible the works that i do in other words he said my eternal life is not compressed to four gospels if i stayed longer i would have unveiled more possibilities now if you have my life i authorize you to keep exploring the possibilities and immortality is one of the possibilities in that life divine health is one of the possibilities in that life the ability to live supernatural though natural is one of the possibilities we must be able to stretch the possibilities what are the contents of this zoe life what does it consist of what are the benefits why should i want to receive the life of god it's like a product you are marketing to me convince me why should i want it what is the excellency of god's life over my natural life are you getting what i'm saying so the bible tells us speaking about man but that man was not just man like you that man was first the man christ are you getting what i'm saying now i know that when you read this scripture he says who is man that thou art mindful of him that man is not just talking about the natural man he's first talking about the firstborn and all he has called into glory because he died as the only begotten son then he resurrected as the first of the begotten and from there he had 120 other begotten sons and from there there are many begotten sons so jesus is no longer the only begotten son of the father by the spirit of adoption we have come into that sonship too are you are you understanding what i'm teaching you and so the bible tells us that when you receive of that son you receive of that life that life is like a drug the presence of the holy spirit the moment he finds expression certain reactions begin to happen watch this he opens you up to the realities so jesus in the new testament becomes what we call our pattern man jesus came and walked for three and a half years to show us an example of what the zoe life is are you getting it? He was the first that opened us up to the possibility of the zoe life so when we saw the things that he did we saw the mighty things that he did the first that had the spirit without measure and he did so many things and then he told us that uh -uh, it is profitable for you that i go for if i do not go i cannot send the comforter he will come and continue he will be an extension of my ministry the holy spirit is to us today what jesus was to the 12 disciples exactly what jesus was to the 12 disciples the holy spirit is to us today that's the reason why there are no three thrones in heaven there are only two thrones in heaven but we agree that there is a father the son and the holy spirit because the third throne is in us there is a marriage that has been done never to be separated again are you are you getting that now it is him that takes us to the god class the presence of the Holy Spirit. Awake. As that rain of glory comes. Some of you, what you need tonight is an upgrade of grace. The grace you have is there. But you have gotten to the limit of it. There are certain dimensions. Hear me, let me tell you something. See, grace is in levels. The Bible says he measured a thousand cubits. Is that true? Measured another thousand cubits doors will open to you according to the degree of grace let me tell you the truth it's not everything that is possible for everybody are you hearing me i told you we are all equal in christ but we are not equal in grace the prophet servant took the rod the same rod went and laid it on the dead body nothing happened is that true but the prophet came and did it see that it is not possible for you does not mean it's not possible in christ but tonight jesus himself the bible says and if i be lifted up tonight we have exalted him with all the worship christ is lifted up you cannot come to his presence and those chains and shackles
and they bound something some of us have been bound by limitations by mindsets the bible says but the hand of the lord came upon something and that rope became like wax like wax many of you will shake out of some things this night Some of you have been thrown into the den of the lion and people have forgotten about you. But can I tell you something? Your enemies will call your name and you will answer. You will say, I'm alive. I got into that dungeon, but before then, that Shekinah of God that preserves men, you will come out strong, come out wise, come out powerful, come out full of grace and tell them, I have a testimony. I know what it means to go to the valley of the shadow of death. But God, who can take a man from a dung hill, the Bible says, and the king sent for Joseph, and they brought him out of his dungeon. Tonight, many of you will activate breakthroughs. God will connect you. Let me tell you something. Listen to me. The Holy Ghost gave me a revelation some time ago. He said, God is called the Father of Spirits. Have you ever known the meaning of that name? That means every spirit is subject to him. When the disciples came in Luke, in the book of Luke, they said, they came rejoicing, saying, Master, even the demons were subject to us through thy name. And Jesus said, do not just rejoice because the spirits. So he's called the father. Are you listening to me? The chief, the captain, above every spirit, including the spirit of your destiny helpers. And so if the father of spirits moves, he can move any spirit. Hear me? The Bible says Nebuchadnezzar did not sleep that night. He got up by himself. He said, oh Daniel, has your God been able to save you? May my God reveal himself as the father of spirits over certain families. The father of spirits every spirit listen herbalists understand this principle they can enter their coven there's what they call summoning the spirits of people is that true while they are sleeping they summon your spirit and the spirit of the person comes to the coven they are trying to mimic god god is the lion satan roars like the lion tonight god will summon the spirits of men let me tell you the truth and compel them to bless you hallelujah he said look up to abraham your father and unto sarah that bear thee for i called him out alone i blessed him and i increased him i called him alone this night is not you and your neighbor i know you are going out together just leave that thing for a while now are you hearing me it's not the issue of me and my neighbor or me and my family members oh, oh this guy is our neighbor in new extension forget about that thing i know mother came with father Bro, forget about that thing and say lord i will not let you go i will not let you go i will not let you go until something in my spirit breaks open i will not let you go I will not let you go I'm provoking you to get angry tonight because what you are about to lift listen when you watch weightlifters as they lift weights before they lift it you see them shouting they are getting themselves angry well because when they are angry an ability they cannot explain comes this is what I'm doing to you when I fire your faith every unbelief that came with your situation I know you trekked from town to come here but can I tell you something God is able to change the story of a man tonight let's see that demonic report that says you will not bear a child let's see that demonic report that says you have fibroid and that you will be pregnant let me tell you the truth my Bible tells me God opened the womb of Leah God opened the womb of Rachel. It is God that opens a door that no devil can shut. 
and he can shut a door that no devil can open. Revelation 3 verse 8. He said, Behold, I know that you have little strength, yet you have kept my word. He said, Behold, I set before you, I set before you. Hallelujah. We had a very touching testimony over the week of the favor of God. Hallelujah. Someone called us and a very professional web designer from Gombe State is the one that he designs for state governments, their websites. And he just called us. He said, Koinonia messages have been blessing him, opening him to dimensions in the spirit. He said he has been stepping into new levels in his career. And he said, please, I want to transport myself, foot my bill, lodge myself, and come and build a free website for the ministry. And I want to train the media team on how to maintain it, everything free of charge. How can you explain this? See, listen, listen. I don't say this thing. See, let me tell you something. We tell testimonies because the testimony of Jesus... That means a testimony that was initiated by the spirit of the Christ is a spirit of prophecy. Meaning it has in itself the ability to compel you to desire it and see it happen in your life. Hallelujah. The testimony of Jesus. The spirit of prophecy. Don't sit down there and say, can it happen? You are saying what God, you cannot belong to a ministry that is carrying certain levels of grace and is not working in your life. Get angry this night. Get angry. He said, I and all the children that the Lord has given me, get angry. When they saw the apostle, they said he had been with Jesus. See, listen, let me tell you this night. Don't you ever hear me? Don't you just leave him, leave him. Don't you ever, are you hearing me? Try to make Satan make you think there is no hope. That language of there is no hope is of the devil. Some of you are outside, hear my voice. Because there are many voices speaking. There are some voices telling you you will never marry. Ladies, hear me. Some are saying because you live the past life. Look at how it is in your house. What is your business? With what has happened to Mr. ABC. The Bible says. A thousand shall fall by your side. Is that true? They fell near you. He said another ten thousand. By your right side. He said none shall harm you. Some of you hear me. This night. I'm serious about this marriage thing. We are going to break this devilish yoke. Some of you have been laughing about it. If you don't take it serious. This night you will be surprised. You are just saying I'm fine. I'm fine. Don't get up and deal with it this night. The Bible says, the whole world lieth in wickedness. Don't let cartoons fool you. This world is not a playground. Are you hearing me? So when it's time to receive, make sure you receive. And the Lord is going to be restoring in this place. You lived a past life. You lost your womb. Who told you God has stopped creating? Read the book of Revelation. He said, for thou was slain. And you have received all things. He said, you have created. He said, they, they are and were created. They were created and are still being created. God did not stop creation. He only rested on the seventh day. When he rested on the seventh day, there was no need for recreation. When man spoiled things, he sent Jesus back. Let me tell you something. Remember not the former things. Are you hearing me? Tonight, don't let the devil say, even you, even you, that everybody knows you in your area to be a prostitute. So what? See, this is why when they came to the land of Jericho, because of the prophetic destiny, are you hearing me, of Rahab, he said, kill everything plus the animals so that there will be no trace to our history. Because she was going to be the great grandmother of Jesus. He said, destroy everything of the past. Tonight, let me tell you something. 
everything whether your mistakes whether your carelessness of the past the bible says remember not the former things how many of us are ready to receive tonight let me give you a few seconds right now i'd like you to think on the things you want god to do for you please don't be mechanical about this we are not doing jamboree this night think very well know what you want god to do if his husband say husband don't say a man if his wife say wife if his breakthrough say lord my heavens are short if his finances say finances if it's your ministry that is dying no growth say oh god measure a thousand cubits this night any area of your life terminal disease infections lump in your breast cancer whatever it is just believe god don't say we have been coming i came the last time i did receive master we have told all night they said he said nevertheless this night at thy word rise up on your feet everybody go ahead and pray in tongues just for one minute exercise your spirit man outside i'm telling you i see a cloud outside a mighty cloud a mighty cloud the lord is showing me a silvery cloud outside god will do mighty things outside pray in one minute cry out your expectation to god go ahead forget about your neighbor talk to the lord say lord you know that you are my last hope this night you are my last hope in this place if you do not help me there is no help again if you do not save my family if you don't change our story then let it be that there is no god but i have no option again pray that demon spirit assaulting your destiny pray enough is enough that yoke of bad luck pray christ has redeemed you by faith tonight you will enter into the experience christ has paid the price you don't need to pay it again but it takes faith to enforce that which christ has done the price has been paid it will not be paid this night that ultimate price yes lord just a song listen to what you are saying listen to what you are saying
Aleluya. I hail you, most high. Lift your hands, everybody, inside and outside. I truly hail you. I hail you, Moses. I truly hail, hail you. Hallelujah. Hear me. The power of God is present in this place, mighty. And God is going to be fishing out people and families. Hear me? Some of you will stand in for your family. Every yoke of darkness, every curse, every the power of God is already moving. Every curse outside, I want you to get ready because there will be a release of fire. Hallelujah. At the count of three, hear me. Inside and outside, at the count of three, with all your heart, you're going to shout Jesus. Hear me. The fire of the Holy Ghost is going to be moving in this place in a dramatic way, especially outside. There will be mighty deliverances for you for your family members every oppression it will bow tonight because upon mount zion there shall be deliverance lift up your hands thank you father take over this meeting right now holy spirit take over this meeting take over this meeting do mighty things i give you all the glory at the count of three hear me i confront gates I confront powers in the name that is above all names out of the abundance of grace that is sufficient in this house at the count of three every devil I speak from the realm of the spirit and I confront altars by the fire of the Holy Ghost you will bow at the count of three one two three shout Jesus Hey, take, 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 take. That devil of darkness, come out. Let God's people go free outside the fire of the Holy Ghost. Bring them out. Bring them out. Every act of witchcraft, every act of divination, every act of sorcery, let the fire fall. I expose every power of darkness right now, right now, right now, outside, outside. There are angels of deliverance in a mighty way. Bring them out. Go proto shekete, rekete tete, e proto peke, le proto sope, rekete tete, e proto sopa, ma pata kata, la pata ta, outside, outside, there is a baptism of fire, no devil, no devil of darkness will stand tonight. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. 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 Oh, there is fire in this place. Yeah. No devil can stand. No devil against your destiny. No enchantment. No divination against Jacob. 
shall stand surely they shall gather but because their gathering is not of the Lord this night they will scatter hallelujah lift up your hands again outside hallelujah hear me those of you outside at the count of three i want you to shout jesus god is not done with you please pick them and bring them many of it will be a mass deliverance are you hearing me just those outside right now at the count of three one two three is the name above all names yokes are breaking spells are breaking yokes are breaking yokes are breaking It's the fire of the Holy Ghost. It's the fire of the Holy Ghost. It's the fire of the Holy Ghost. Outside, outside, angels are still moving. Outside, it's the fire of the Holy Ghost. Right at the back, right to the back. Lord, let no devil. Let no devil stand your presence. Shake your temper, cut your prata, banana baka. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power it's the baptism of fire no devil will stand we are in the presence of the Lord Hear me. Hear me. Some of you are receiving liberty. You don't have to fall and come out. Are you hearing me? But they are just living. Living. See, some of you be checking. We have not prayed for the sick yet. But be checking yourself. You will find out that miracles are already happening. Because some of these sicknesses are orchestrated by devils. Now, hear me the lord jesus christ is in this place at the count of three i speak to all these demons that have oppressed these people as a point of contact i speak as an ambassador at the count of three you will leave them complete deliverance no hiding 
let the word of god search even to the dividing of the soul and the spirit there be no hiding place at the count of three under this apostolic fire at the count of three you will go right now one two three go 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 come out come out come out and return no more come out come out come out and return no more come out come out there's no hiding place come out there's fire upon every devil fire shake it it's the fire of the holy ghost there's no hiding place Listen, as this is happening to you, I want you to know that this is happening in your family too. Are you hearing me? This is the spirit of death in this brother's family. The spirit of death. Right now, thou foul devil, I see you in the spirit. Go, go, come out now. Come out now. Out. Hallelujah. Let me pray for this lady. See, I'm seeing horns horns this is what i'm saying that devil is a liar right now i make contact with your body by the fire of the holy ghost out of her right now you're a wicked foul devil of darkness just lay your hands on her head in the name of jesus now come out oh devil of darkness there's no hiding for you in the mighty name of jesus this curse of darkness is gone from this lady Hallelujah. Ulcer. If you have ulcer, lift your hands. Anybody. Ulcer. Please. You're going to be healed now. Check yourself. Hallelujah. Now we'll take some instant testimonies. Hallelujah. We'll take some instant testimonies. Because of time, we usually don't do that. But we'll just to encourage a few people. Lift your hands inside and outside. You're suffering from peptic ulcer. It will go now. Peptic ulcer. Lift your hands as I rebuke that spirit. Some of you have wounds. Those wounds will close up now. Now, not later on. Just leave them. God is not done with them until he is done. Brother, look at me. You are a great man, but let me tell you, you didn't come out for yourself. You came out for your family. Where are you from? not where you are coming from Edo State. Edo State this is what I'm seeing the Lord is showing me a shrine with seven stones and there's cola knot in the middle are you listening to me so God is setting you free you believe that let me pray for you for your family out now those altars of darkness be gone forever please don't be quick to carry them Hallelujah. Lift your hands, ulcers. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That name that is above every other name. Ulcers be healed now. Ulcers be healed now. Ulcers inside and outside. Be healed now. Start checking yourself. Check yourself. Miracles are happening. God is healing ulcer. Ulcer. Check. Check. The moment you see a notable miracle. Um... Maybe we'll have a few, I don't know, maybe at the back, one or two people. The ministers who verify them will take one or two testimonies. The Lord is showing, who is Hanatu? Hanatu, Hanatu. 
I'm hearing the name Hanatu. Come now, don't wait there, please. There's no time. Hanatu. Hanatu. God is visiting the family of Hanatu. You are Hanatu. Your name is Hanatu. You. Look at me. God is visiting your family. Are you hearing me? A devil of darkness. Spell and yokes of bondage. Let our family go now. In the name of Jesus Christ. God is not just delivering the family. God is anointing this young man. God will do mighty things. Take the anointing. You will become a mighty man of God. Mighty man of God. Hallelujah. Sister, this lady, come please. Quickly. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. I'm hearing the name Grace. Look at me. Who is Grace? I'm hearing the name Grace. Your friend? Your church member. We need to pray for Grace because death wants to take her life. Are you hearing me? Grace, that's, I'm just flowing as the Holy Spirit is helping me. But then the Lord is going to visit you in three things. See, listen to me. Number one, I, the Lord always shows me these things because I'm seeing marital issue. Are you married? No, sir. Are you married? Do you know me? Have I met with you? The Lord wants to solve that issue right now because you're looking pretty on the outside. Are you hearing me? But I'm seeing shadow. That's the only thing I'm seeing as your face in the spirit. There is no form, just shadow. But the Lord is going to set you free. Number two, who is doing a building project? Me. A building. Did you tell me this is the second thing God is going to do? Supernatural grace to complete the building project. Are you listening to me? Number three, God is blessing you in the area of business. I'm hearing business. Who does business? Yes, I do business. Are you sure? Don't just say yes. So are you very sure? Selling of shoes and bags. Okay, you are going to see an escalation in your business. Three th these three things. Hold my hands, Father. That yoke of bondage. I break her free from it right now. Ah, what is this thing that I'm seeing again? Do you know what I'm seeing? I'm not seeing a woman. I'm seeing a man. See, don't feel embarrassed. Who comes to oppress you in the night? You have those kind of experiences. This is the man I'm seeing. That devil is a liar. Are you hearing me? Let her go. She must be free by the power of the Holy Ghost. This is what is stopping this marriage. I set you free. You will experience the hand of God, the grace of God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Beatrus, your son name is Beatrus. Your son name is Beatrus. Beatrus, your son name is Beatrus. Please, let's hurry up. Your son name is Beatrus. When you have that person, please let him come out. Hallelujah. Now, if you have problem with your ears, please, we have to be fast. Ears, whether one side, or if you came with anybody inside and outside, you came with anybody that is partially or completely deaf, please put your hands there right now. Put your hands right there. Some of you feel like water in your ears. Just put your hands. Please, as you're receiving miracles, some of you, I'm not mentioning your case. Just walk out, Bishop Stan and Pastor Jakes are outside. Take the courage to walk out now. Go and drop your testimony. Hallelujah. We are going to take one or two of them. The ministers are at the back. Hallelujah. They are standing. Even if the miracle has started, they will perfect it. Look at me. Come. See. Brother, come. Where were you sitting? Outside. At the back. Hold on. What happened to you? Coming here for like very well, but I've not felt anything, so I opened up my heart. What happened? What happened? That's the question. Body vibrating. Huh? See, the Lord Jesus, because even now God has not finished. One of the things God is calling you, it will be a time of preparation, but God is calling you. You're going to be a great teacher of the word. Are you hearing me? 
he will teach the word very prophetically. Look at my eyes. Just look at my eyes. Spirit of revelation. My God, I pray. The eye is the light of the body. Let something happen to this brother. Let there be a straight line from Genesis to Revelation. I impart upon you. Just look at my eyes. You're receiving a mighty impartation. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Please go outside. God is visiting people. I'm seeing some, someone healed. Lump in the breast. Lump in the breast is getting healed right now. Right now. The moment it is your case, celebrate God. Check it and go out. Celebrate it. There's nothing to be ashamed of. This is, this is a outside. A lady is healed. Lump in the breast. Your right breast. Outside. There's healing going on right now. A lump in the breast. Outside. A lady is being healed. Lump in the breast is going. Hallelujah. Now, blood disease blood disease i want to pray for blood disease whether hepatitis hepatitis is killing people like chickens right now whether it is hepatitis hiv aside from genotypes we'll pray for genotypes differently hallelujah but any other blood disease please lift your hands quickly quickly please lift your hands want to rebuke that devil Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you are lifting your hands, lift it because the power of God will come upon you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray, blood disease be healed. Be healed right now. Inside and outside, be healed. HIV virus, die now. In the name of Jesus, sickle cell anemia, sickle cell anemia, sickle cell anemia die right now please can we get another mic hallelujah okay let's just take one hallelujah so sir um this lady had been suffering from asthma for a long time and also sorry for a long time and she said she couldn't shout and in fact right now she's lost her voice hallelujah because god healed her wife standing outside the moment man of god said that people with ulcer, God is touching them right now. God touched and she was healed. She began to shout and she's lost her voice. Hallelujah. Can you shout for us? Shout. Praise the Lord. It comes permanent in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please, as more miracles are happening, don't just come out here to testify, please. Now, I want to pray for a woman. You came, you have pains. It's, it's an elderly woman. Something, I don't know if it's a growth or something. Please, who is that? Please and please, let's save time. God is healing people right now. And then I'm seeing, watch this. This part, you're feeling sometimes you walk and it's almost like you want to fall. Your bone here, come out. You're a lady. You're a lady. God is showing me. The lady is holding a baby. This is what I'm seeing. You are holding a baby. Whether it's your child, who is that, please? Holding a baby, oh. You are holding a baby. Where is the baby? Was she holding a baby? Because, come. Open the floodgates of heaven. Where is, where is the pain? This is the baby. This is the baby. Come, madam. You will be healed right now. Look at me. You, you can see her limping. Who can see her limping? Can you see her limping? Can you see her limping? Madam, hold my hands. You believe in the power of the Holy Spirit? Lay your hands on her. Which of them? Which of them? Where's the pain? What happened? Just like that. That devil will leave you right now. Because there is a name. Lord Jesus, thank you. Amen. Come. March your legs. Go ahead. Go ahead. March. Look at, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Is there any pain? Are you feeling any pain? Just a little. Go ahead. Just march in the name of Jesus Christ. Now check it. Walk. Walk and come. Walk and come. Jump. Look at. Look at this. Give Jesus a shout of praise. 
Open the heavens, let it rain, let it rain. Would you open the floodgates of heaven, let it rain, let it rain. Would you open the floodgates? Everybody sing, let it rain, let it rain, open the Lord is ministering to me. Just leave her five months. You are a lady here, you have not seen your period for five months. Five months, you have not seen your period, you've shared it with a few friends right now this night this night i know there are lady ushers they'll help you hallelujah all kinds of menstrual issues it will disappear it will disappear right now open the floor gates of heaven as soon as i pray for you take her to the restroom you will check yourself right now right now that yoke of bondage be free now by the power of the holy ghost there's the fire of the holy ghost please take her please take her so she doesn't feel embarrassed She's not the only one. There will be miracles. There are more miracles coming. Celebrate Jesus Christ. Please, can we have another mic? So that Pastor Jakes, is there another mic? Okay, it's here. Please just go to the back. Go to the back. Yes. Hallelujah. This brother's name is Dennis. 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 And while standing here, when the man of God said, she lift up her hands, and those that had ulcers, she lift up your hands. God is healing ulcer. She actually had ulcer and it translated into asthma hallelujah and while lifting up his hands what happened praise the lord this is my first time to come here and it leaked to asthmatic hallelujah as the man of god says like if you have as uh, if you have ulcer and i believe he's going to he's going to be healed and as i lift up my hand i'm having chest chest pain hallelujah but now I'm not feeling anything. It's just as cool as... Breathe, as breathe as in and out. Breathe in and out. Go ahead. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. In and out. Any problem. No Celebrate problem. Jesus. Hallelujah. My grain headache has just been healed. My grain headache has been healed now. My grain headache. Please check yourself. My grain headache. My grain headache has been healed. Make sure you just rush down to the back. My grain headache. Thank you, Jesus Christ. My grain headache has been healed. Now, please listen. There's someone you wake up in the morning. Your heart area here. Your heart area pains you. It's as if your heart is tearing. When you wake up early in the morning. This thing has been happening for a long time. Who is that person? Your heart. Just, just this. You cannot even sleep on that side. Because when you rest on that side, you have serious problem. This is not the only one. I'm seeing a lady. You're a young lady. You're a young lady. Open the floor gates. Mama, do, does she understand English? Who brought her? Mama? Okay. What? Selena is an uh, official outside interpreter. Ask her what's wrong with her. Make it down, Mama. Her, her hand and her legs. Her hand. Everything. This is, see, the devil once is supposed to be from her head down. This is stroke. Are you seeing? This is stroke that the devil wants to bring. Tell her right now she will, she's going to be healed and she will dance. Miracles. Look at the lady who just came. Hallelujah. You need to celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. While standing here worshiping God, she said she's had menstrual pain for a long, long time. Hallelujah. The pain had been there and while Apostle ministered to her, something remarkable happened. You want to hear? Hallelujah. Please, we need a lady to touch her stomach. She said because she were pains, so we need somebody to verify. Now the pains are gone. Yes. The pains are gone. 
Anything? Hallelujah. Please celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Check yourself. Don't just stand waiting. Check yourself. God is doing miracles. Even if you're outside, just Bishop and Pastor Jakes are at the back. Mama, tell her. God is going to heal her right now. Ask her, does she believe? Tell her to hold my hands. The Lord Jesus sets you free. That devil, gone. Pain, gone. Come up. Tell her to come up and march. It's gone. It's gone. Look at this. It's gone. It's gone. In the name of Jesus Christ. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. Would you open the floodgates of heaven? Let it rain. Let it rain. Hold on. How does she feel? Is this still? Is the pain still there? She's not feeling any pain. Mama, let's match. Can you dance? Play any song for her. Look at, look at somebody who could not stand well. What kind of song do they sing? You, you people should learn Alsa songs for our mothers. You people don't know one Alsa song. Annie, give us one Alsa song. Outside, a hole in the teeth has been closed. Outside, a hole in the teeth. Check yourself. A hole in the teeth. A hole in the teeth. It has been paining you. Check. You find out it has is gone right now. Right now, the Lord is showing me a hole in the teeth is closed. The hole is closed completely. Please make sure you verify before coming. Okay. Okay, repain. My heart, each and every moment when I wake up in the morning, it's like it shifts and it aches really for a while now. While this moment, while I was standing right here, when I just received her healing, I felt it just happened immediately. Praise the Lord. Give God a praise. Hallelujah. Please, if you are healed, just walk right at the back. The Lord is showing me another miracle one eye the left eye of somebody outside god is really visiting people outside the left eye you don't see well with it there's you see like an image intercepting your eye is gone right now please check it what was she okay lay your hands there thank you jesus for your healing power gone check yourself See, the anointing does not just come. Check yourself. Please don't, don't feel embarrassed to say you have to say yes. No. If it doesn't happen, say it. We'll pray for you here. Check yourself. Check yourself very well. Do what you couldn't do. Can you? 
any pain. I'm still waiting for the lady. Someone, the, I think, the, did I say left or right now? Breast lump, breast lump is gone. It's gone. Check it. Don't, don't wait. Check, check and go outside. Pastor Jakes is there. They are busy verifying people's cases. Inside or outside. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, um, this is very interesting. There's a family here that has been suffering delay. And God is going to solve the problem in a very dramatic way. Wait, 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 wait. Listen. The power of God is going to carry the person from where he is. The person will run out here with such speed. This is a sign that this is what God is doing. Hallelujah. This is the sign that God gave me. This is very interesting. The way the Holy Spirit walks, sign and wonders here. From outside, from outside, the power of God will pick the person. He will run with the spirit of Elijah. It's from outside. Lord, let it happen according to your word. I give you praise and I give you glory. You will come out under a tremendous influence of the spirit. It's a sign that this is what God is doing. Please, let's continue before the person comes out. You will come out, certainly. This is the word of the Lord. Now, I'm seeing a baby that is sick. You came with a baby that is sick. Please, who is the person? The baby cries in the night. Please, hurry up quickly. Because Pastor Jakes will still come up here. And Bishop Stan. Ah whatever mountain will not has not answered to it will answer to you this night who is this this is the baby that is sick what's wrong with her uh, in 2000 open the floodgates of heaven 2003 she was sick so we took her to the hospital and we transfused her after then she was one more person again this same experience for one more person outside one more person outside is going to happen again one more person by the power and the influence of the spirit this is a sign and a wonder god is restoring delay in families the power of god will just pick you from the crowd and bring you here with tremendous speed let's listen they transfuse her and after what did they say is wrong with her Doctor confirmed that she has HIV. With the transfusion of blood, she has HIV. That's what the doctor confirmed. That what? It's HIV positive. That devil is a liar. Come, my dear. Look at me. What's her name? How can a girl bear the name Favor and still have HIV? You see how demonic Satan is? The Bible says a man was sitting at a beautiful gate with an ugly situation. A lady, this is like Jabez, but tonight like the prayer of Jabez, he said, oh, that thou wouldest bless me. Hallelujah. You will go and test her. You will come back with a testimony. We will change it. HIV is a spirit. And it will bow. Sweetheart, hold my hands. Hold my hands, both of your hands. Yeah. Just leave her. Go and test her. She's free. Another mighty miracle. Another mighty miracle. I tell you, God is doing wonders in this place tonight. Listen. Hallelujah. Apostles, this is amazing. Listen. Celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. The, the word of knowledge you gave about a woman, a lady outside with the with the lump. Lump. The lady with the lump. Listen. How okay, how long has it been? Help us. Mm, for like two years. How long? Two years. Right now. It's gone. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. 
Lift your hands. Look at me. Lift your hands. Lord, let your power come upon her. You will perfect this right now. That which you have started, let it be perfected in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amazing. Amazing. I'm telling you, God is doing amazing things. So if your miracle has started, Bishop is praying, Jake, they are praying. We are very serious. Don't go back. Don't go back. A wrist has just been healed. You feel a pain. In fact, there used to be like a growth. Check it. It has disappeared. Check it right now. It has disappeared. Check it. It has disappeared. Check it. God is doing mighty miracles. Check it. It has disappeared. Hallelujah. Now, I'm seeing a woman. There are objects that move in your body. Serious objects. It moves sometimes to your legs. Sometimes to your chest. Hallelujah. Right now as I pray, you are going to be free and you find out that you are free. You are feeling light. Please, when that happens to you, go down. The ministers are seriously praying there. Father, in the name of Jesus, this demonic thing, this demonic thing, this demonic yoke of darkness, let it leave your body right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Come, my sister. What's your name? Grace. Grace. When I was speaking to a lady here and I said, Grace, I was, my eyes was being fixed. Are you married? We are going to visit marriage issues now. Just get ready. We are going to deal ruthlessly with that devil. Are you hearing me? Marriage is a good thing. Say it. Again. Say it one more time. Every good and perfect gift. Where does it come from? Where does it come from? That means every bad and imperfect gift comes from where? I tell you the truth. God is going to visit marriages right now. Look at me. Men don't come to you. Anybody that comes, they just mock you. They run away. They do all of these things. Some even insult you. Can I tell you something? You are wonderfully and fearfully made. I hope you know that God does mighty marriage miracles in this place. So when we are talking about marriage, look at another miracles are happening. Like I tell you, there is an open heaven. And this is what happens once there is praise. Please make sure the, the mic is set. Let's take this testimony. Yes, sir. Come, sister. Hallelujah. Apostle, when you gave a word for the woman, you said somebody's something was moving in movement her. in her body yes, exactly she's this person. is the person she movement she had an accident some days ago and since then she's been having funny movement movement in, in your body even standing here in the meeting she was still having that any movement right now in your body lay your hands on your on your stomach no not on your stomach not your legs thank you jesus christ Amen, sir. jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus You're free, completely free. Give Jesus a big sister. I'm going to put, look at me. What are you doing? You are a teacher. Yes, sir. Kalokura. Eh? Kalokura. Government secondary school. I'm going to pray for you. Why don't they like you? What is all this thing I'm seeing? I don't know. Eh? I don't know. Do you know me? Did we discuss this? Because I'm seeing real hatred. They hate this woman. Eh? I'm seeing Chuck. Chuck, you are a teacher. What are you teaching? Okay, you promise school, they teach everything. Oh, okay. Let me pray for you. Look at me. That devil is a liar and you should settle down. Do you believe me? This one is oppression. No, this one is not just. Let her go. That wicked, foul devil of darkness. Let her go now. Let her go. Come out of her right now. Let her go. Thou devil of darkness. Release her right now. With a mighty shout. Go. Go. Now, please, 
if there is a woman here you've suffered barrenness or a man anything that you have not given birth come out here quickly please quickly quickly bishop is still coming and jakes we have to hurry up there's a vigil that will happen here please come out quickly you you must be married though except if you are standing for somebody don't be emotional about it please please be looking at your neighbor if you are from the same place go back somebody has come to represent another person we will have miracle children in this place look at look how many people the devil is stopping them from enjoying i mean some of them are standing in for their loved ones look at look at this look at this it looks like they're coming out to give offering but this is this is lack of lack of children you see the relevance of meetings like this listen to me who is standing for herself or for himself for yourself for yourself come here please quickly those who are standing for others just wait for yourself look at me are you together she's your wife oh both of you are standing for yourself where's your husband he traveled i'm seeing a baby girl go and write it hallelujah can i pray for you hold my hands see let me tell you sister look at me you will come back here with your baby girl and testify you believe that lord confirm your word with power right now thank you jesus you are set free ah you're on his marriage why didn't you wait the guy just said okay no 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 don't see don't laugh it doesn't mean you should do it anyway but don't laugh it's coming out look at me you believe that there is supernatural grace for marriage here yeah? when when are you when is the wedding eh? hold my hands according to the time of life i speak to you under the unction of the spirit before the end of this month you will be in a very godly serious relationship with a serious lady that is virtuous and love God father of spirits connect them you are the father of spirits in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ God bless you wow mighty miracles again are happening you too you for yourself lay your hands on your stomach come because I'm seeing something else what did the doctor say that means well we shall know this is not from god whatever it is pid pid we'll pray whatever it is and see look at me wherefore god had so highly exalted him and given him a name at least the men don't understand some of them but the ladies you understand what she said abby do you understand or not we are going to pray look at me it will go and you will give birth to a lot of children what will stop you is discipline not lack of are you hearing what i'm saying i wish your husband were here oh, because he's not only you i'm supposed to pray for where is he just pray for him thank you jesus just lay your hands there father perfect her the power of god is coming upon you and that devilish thing is leaving you right now return with testimonies return with testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ. Please let's hear Pastor Jakes. Hallelujah. Praise God. Apostle, when you give the word for somebody outside that God was feeling the person's teeth. Feeling the person's teeth. How many of you remember? Two this of her teeth. Two of her teeth. Had been removed. Can you open your mouth? Don't feel embarrassed. Two of her teeth has been removed. Look at. Sorry. I, this is bad. Viewers discretion. I'm sorry. Don't feel bad. We are disciplined people. But just so that we we'll celebrate God, check no hole. Look at this, no hole. I can't see any hole here. There was your teeth was removed. Two teeth. Two teeth was removed. Who knows her? Who knows her? Is it true that the teeth was removed? Who is that? Yes. Yes. 
is, is true. You are sure of that. Her name is Dorcas. Look at and the teeth has been filled supernaturally. Give Jesus a big, Hallelujah. big hand, big hand, big hand of praise. Hallelujah. Now, all of you that are standing for any see, if you are standing for anybody, when you go back, send the person a text and say, I just stood in for you now. Believe and receive. Are you hearing me? Send them a text. Don't let them roam around. You are here suffering to stand in for them. They are not connecting again. Hallelujah. And because you are standing here, it's impossible for you to face anything called barrenness. I hope you know that. The Bible says, and when Job prayed for his friends, God turned his own captivity. Job 42 verse 10 and 11. Let me pray for you. Lift your hands. Look at as many people. Lift your hands. Some of you, the power of God will come upon you on behalf of the people there. My God, children, the Bible says, are a heritage from the Lord. And Father, you have made this place an apostolic ground in this city where there are tangible proofs, evidences that Jesus is alive. Right now, I pray, according to the measure of grace, every yoke of bondage, hear me, every curse, every fibroid, low sperm count, every devil of darkness, that is responsible for impotency or barrenness be lifted now in the name of Jesus be lifted now in the name of Jesus the power of God is coming upon some of you on behalf of your family members I release miracle children. I release miracle children. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. On behalf of those you are standing for, they will come back rejoicing, testifying. Every spirit of darkness responsible for unfruitfulness. If they don't have womb, we create new wombs now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Return back rejoicing. Send them a text that they have been prayed for. And let me tell you, see, listen, hold on, hold on. There are some who take in but lose the child. Is that true? Lift your hands on behalf of them because some is not that they don't take in. They take in one month, two months, they just wake up in the morning and they just see blood that devil is a liar are you hearing me tonight is miracle service my god i pray the bible says the hand of zerubbabel that started this work that same hand will perfect it i pray no more miscarriage in the name of jesus everyone standing here return with dramatic testimonies in the mighty name of jesus please go back rejoicing god bless you Pastor Jakes, Bishop Stan, please come. Please come. They'll just be ministering to you in a few minutes. Hallelujah. I know that there are areas that they'll minister to you. While that is happening, pass the prayer requests, please. This is a time for God to visit your case. Please, as you are passing it, be praying in tongues. As you are passing it, be praying in tongues. Say, Lord, this is it. My time has come. If they didn't call you, your prayer point will call your case now. Hallelujah. God bless you, sir. Pastor Jake, so just minister by the grace of God. And then Bishop Stan, sir. Please write your prayer request quickly.
just go ahead and lift up your hands as I pray for you. Whatever you're trusting the Lord for, and Lord communicates to me for some of you, especially God will touch you. Hmm. God's going to be touching some of you, especially what you've desired from Him. Specifically, some of you, God's going to be activating some anointing upon your life. An unusual kind of anointing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 I'm sensing it being poured on somebody's head. There are people, the Lord will be pouring it upon your head. Parido fine tangro sticky vantahi. Lingro supra tika tareboste. Randa kai. One of you, the anointing will be so heavy on your leg. Heavy, heavy. They will literally have to carry you out of this place. <laughs> they will literally have to carry you out of this place. Blessings, blessings. God is blessing some people. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Blessings, God is blessing you. Please, those of you that are serving presently, like leaders in fellowship, just lift up your hands. Specifically, those ones. The Lord wants to reward you. God will touch you. He will reward you. God will reward you right now. Those of you serving, the Lord will reward you. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let the reward come upon you. Let the reward come upon you. The Lord will reward you. In the name of Jesus Christ, let the reward come upon you. Let the reward come upon you in the name of Jesus. The Lord reaches out to you to bless you. The Lord reaches out to you to bless you. The Lord will surprise you. Thank you, Jesus. Please, that person, it's a, it's your pancreas. Just lay your hands on your stomach. You've been having unusual stomach pains. Your pancreas. I think pancreas should be in stomach, right? Pancreas, pancreas, pancreas. That's why I hear pancreas. Just lay your hands on your stomach. You've been having that problem. Right now, I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I release healing. Let healing come to your body. In the name of Jesus, let healing come to your body. Healing come to your body. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, healing come to your body. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The Lord is going to be touching some people's eyes and you begin to have visionary experiences. The Lord is going to be touching. You'll feel like fire in your eyes as I pray with you right now. You'll feel like fire in your eyes. The Lord will touch your eyes. The Lord will touch your eyes. You begin to have visionary experiences. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, let the wind of God touch your eyes. Let the wind of God touch your eyes. The wind of God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the wind of God touches your eyes. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. While Apostle was ministering, God told me about somebody amongst us, and I don't know, there might be more than one. Um, the devil gives you food to eat in the dream. And when you're done eating that food, you become heavy. I don't mean physically, spiritually. Let me clear this. It's possible for God to do an impactation for you. It's possible for God to do an impartation for you in the dream by giving you food, angel's bread. It's a spiritual one. But this one I'm talking about, the devil ministers it to you in the dream. And when you are done eating it, you wake up and feel less spiritual. You feel this heaviness upon your body and upon your spirit. If you are the one, I would like to pray with you. She's one of them. Father, thank you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I rebuke that spirit. I rebuke that spirit. 
in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I rebuke that spirit in Jesus' name. Go! In the name of Jesus. Go! Thank you, Father. I thank you in the name of Jesus. You are free in the name of Jesus. You are delivered in the name of Jesus. You are free in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. I declare freedom. Freedom in the name of Jesus. You are free in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. He will minister to you. Who dropped this picture? What happened to the baby? It's dead. The baby was born crippled. That devil is a liar. What did they say? No socket. This baby will stand and will walk. Let me tell you, if your prayer request gets here, it will be answered. Let me pray for marriages. Lift your hands before I pray for this. Just three things and we'll be done. Marriages. Hallelujah. The Bible says your marriage shall be a blessing. Your children will surround your table. Remember, we always share the scripture here. Please make sure you really lift your hands. Please lift inside and outside. I pray right now. Especially for those that have exceeded the normal time. You, you understand what I'm saying, right? The normal time that should happen. You are a man. You can't get a decent lady that is ready to settle down with you. And now as I'm praying this prayer, hear me. God is going to visit people. But some of you, if you know that you are not walking according to the ways of the Lord, stop it this night. Praise God. You can't be sleeping around, hopping around from man to man. One army officer to another one. One banker to another one. And then say, I don't have a husband. No, no. The Bible says, come out from among them and be ye separate. We are a holy people here and holiness is a big deal. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So as you are lifting up your hands, make sure that you are making a commitment. No sex before marriage. Don't let anybody deceive you. I'm saying it straight to the point. Hallelujah. No sex before marriage. No caressing. No all this nonsense that people do. No. Don't, don't open up yourself for demons. You tie your soul with demonic things. Be sure that you are going to keep many Christian relationships are not pure. Because a lot of people think everybody is doing it. No, not everybody is doing it. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand upon his own? So, sister, just get it straight. Don't say yes to any brother who plans to just, if he does not have enough patience to honor you and wait, whatever is pursuing him, let him carry it out of your life. Hallelujah. I need to say this before I pray for you. God is not a magician. Are you listening to me? This is not a herbal center. This is a place where miracles happen by definite kingdom principles. Hallelujah. So make sure as you are standing here to receive, you are serious with God. And you've been involved in all these things I'm talking about. Stop it this night. Stop it this night. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Let me pray for you. Lift your hands. Father, you put this as an apostolic platform to help and to build people and to terminate the works of darkness. And Father, this night, I pray for your people inside and outside and our online community. I declare every yoke of marital delay right now by the fire of the Holy Ghost, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, 
be free from it now be free from it now anyone here who is of a marriageable age right now we connect you to your life partner in the name of Jesus and I pray that anyone here who is under any yoke because there are some of you it's not just you all the ladies in your house some you notice that you marry almost at age 40 no matter what you do no matter how decent you are you will never just get a faithful man some of you is married men that keep chasing you as young as you are you can't get a godly brother you are coming to church you are serving in church the brothers are looking at you as if they are looking at this speaker and then it's only a married man with children that are old enough to be your age who will be disturbing you that yoke of bondage this night kapoto sheka repato telebata aparato koposobata let that yoke be broken in the name of jesus let that yoke be broken i release you into your marital destiny i release you sisters i release you sisters i release you brothers i release you in the name of jesus christ hallelujah praise the lord now please is this all the prayer requests in one minute we are going to pray and then there are three areas three more areas i need to speak finance breakthrough this is very important please keep your spirit open if possible just be praying in tongues let me invite the ministers pastor williams please come bishop come we are going to pray pastor williams is going to lead us hallelujah let me tell you something as the servant of god is speaking on this thing and as we are agreeing i want you to be, this is not a ritual don't take it as a ritual the scriptural revelation behind this for those of you who are just coming the bible says how that listen 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 hezekiah took the threat letter are you listening to me a threat letter was written and the bible says he took it to the altar and dropped it before god when hannah needed a miracle the bible says she came to the altar are you hearing me this is the revelation behind this we don't do anything without revelation so i want you to connect everybody rise up and stretch your hands just stretch your hands towards this stage please those outside just stretch it towards your screen and begin to pray in tongues shake up Rakatata paka prokoto baladaba. Se chala brakata satalibe. Le kalumis e brakata satalaba. Se brakati kotosh e na satala brakata shi. E kaka satala brakata shi. Se brevi na kalazumi na katashia. Rapata shadoni brakati kalabadosh taba. Ke se brodi kada kada brakata satalaba. In the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, oh Jehovah. Father of all spirits, the great I am. Mayida subikro lays in amakata sata. Liza pata shekabara. The one that divided the Red Sea. Lika ziprata shetebara. The one that released manna. Paul release manna from heaven, Jehovah, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. I pray for miracles, miracles, miracles upon this prayer request. Miracles, visitations, miracles, visitation. Far above, far above what they have written. Far above, far above connection, completion, perfections in the name of Jesus. Completions, perfections in the name of Jesus. Miracles, miracles, visitation, divine visitation. Jehovah, Jehovah, miracle worker upon this request. Breathe upon it. Breathe upon it. Breathe upon it. Let there be miracles. Let your people testify in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord. Bless your name, Jehovah. In Jesus' name we pray. It is done in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are a prosperous ministry. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We are a prosperous ministry. Mysteriously prosperous. By the hand of God. I believe in prosperity. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I believe you cannot truly represent the government of heaven with poverty. You cannot help the poor by being one of them. Are you hearing me? And I want to pray for you. Please believe. Lift your hands. See, listen. The irrefutable laws of prosperity remains tithing kingdom investments and your givings. They open the heaven and position you and then the blessings begin to come through divine ideas, favor, wisdom, the blessings of God upon your hands, strength and long life. Hallelujah. I want to encourage everybody. Please bring out a seed. I can't pray for you for prosperity just like that. Please. Please. This, if you don't have a revelation of what we are doing, just keep your seat, please. This is not some... I won't help you. Let me tell you the truth. I'm not going to help you. It's not just about saying receive. No. Please. God has blessed you. You can help somebody by your side. Please. Please. Bring out something that will cost you. Some of you are greedy and stingy. See, let me tell you something. I pray for you that giving grace will be part of your life. Many of you think God is out to rob. You can't outgive God. Hallelujah. The secret of prosperity is giving. It will never change. There are many of you God has been speaking to you. You won't listen. I can't tell you how many times God has instructed me to empty my accounts. If you see, if your heart is still on prosperity, God will never give you. He said, my son, give me your heart. Until you conquer greed, you are not entitled to handle true riches. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Please bring out a seed. Some of you will bring out something that will cost you. Let me tell you, don't pity yourself. Don't pity yourself at all. Don't make foolish, impulsive decisions. Are you hearing me? We are not manipulating people. Don't make stupid decisions that you come outside. And, no, no. Make some of you, God is speaking to you right now. Some of you need to stand for your families. Honestly, honestly, see, if the ministry is blessed and you are not blessed, it means we are fake. Something is wrong. Are you hearing me? I tell you, this, this prosperity oil, there is an oil. It will come upon some of you in a fearful way. Please, inside and outside, I beg you, if you don't have a seed, can you hold the hands of somebody who has a seed? Please connect. Allow the person to hold your hands. Don't feel bad. Please stand up, everybody. This is a very serious thing. Lift your hands and lift your seat. Hear me? Solomon, there was a sacrifice upon the altar. And Solomon said, Oh God, oh God, attend unto your people whenever they call you that you will respond. And the Bible says the glory, the Shekinah of God came and filled that room. I'm praying. I'm praying. See, I tell you, it, it, it pains my heart. It pains. We want you the full gospel. You must represent the kingdom in its entirety. We don't just want you to be anointed and be begging and be sleeping with men for money. No. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Please lift. Some of you, what will come upon you is the giving grace because honestly for some of you is greed greed even to yourself lift it up i want to pray oh god has given us this anointing and i want to pray my god it will happen it's going to come on like fire it will fall on many of you please help me my god i pray 
the oil of prosperity the power to get wealth at the count of three my god let it fall mightily right now one two three take it take it take it take it take it shake it i activate it outside i activate it let fire come upon your seed i give your seed a voice in the spirit it took a sacrifice to put your family in poverty we use this sacrifice to bring them out of poverty it took a sacrifice to enter a covenant of poverty we take this seed and bring you into the realm of blessing Psalm 66 verse 12 He said thou hast caused men to ride upon our heads We walk through waters and through fire But thou broughtest us into a wealthy place My God You know we are not fake We are not just trying to do Religious jamboree To take money from people I pray My God I give your seed a voice and I instruct it go around the earth gather your kind and return back to the owner I prophesy under this apostolic unction I speak to your seed go around the earth gather your kind go around the earth gather your kind go around the earth gather your kind and return a hundredfold hallelujah please cast your seeds with joy quickly help me please bring the offering basket hallelujah now i want to pray finally before the altar call breakthroughs there are families that need major breakthroughs are you hearing me there are some of you your the way from the day they gave birth to you you have never celebrated entering a house that God gave your own family. Embarrassment after embarrassment. Every time they start a building project, rain will wash it or something satanic will happen. Breakthrough is when the limitations that are stopping you are taken away. Lift your hands. The Bible says, Thou shalt break forth on the right and on the left thou shalt break forth please receive it some of you need to call your loved ones and say look a prayer was prayed there are some houses that have been built 10 years 10 years is a cost it's a cost i'm telling you there are some people they are they are lecturers but they are still begging for money to feed this is this is the yoke of bondage there are families that live from hand to mouth. Some of you, as you are looking at me now, you are the ones who are the breadwinners of your entire family, as young as you are. It ought not to be so. The Bible says, a good man liveth an inheritance, not taken from his children's children. Lift your hands, please. Where is the God that brings breakthrough? Where is that God that changed the story of Samaria? by the mouth of the prophet where is that God that instructed the prophet to say by this time my God and my King I pray for koinonia in the name of Jesus let this breaker anointing like the angel of death in the days of Moses let this breakthrough anointing begin to go from house to house house to house house to house we send it to Abuja. We send it to Saria. We send it to Kodi State. We send it to Lagos. We send it to Kaduna. Like the angel of death visited his homes. This night, this night, this night, I speak. This night, let this anointing go to families and create the Garden of Eden. Let it create the Garden of Eden. 
Halleluja. Halleluja. How many of you have noticed the sudden death of professors? How many of you have noticed it? Have you seen the way lecturers are dying like chickens? How many of you know it's not normal? See, the Bible says they know not. You do not know what is happening this night. This night, the angel of the Lord will move across Abu. Are you hearing me? Altars of darkness will be destroyed. See, this is why God put centers like this to legislate on behalf of territories. The apostolic grace is not for making mouth, it's for taking charge. It's a rule thou in the midst of your enemies. The church is the light of the world. The church cannot be here and things are happening. If your father is a lecturer or you live with a lecturer, I want you to lift your hands. We want to prophesy that oil of exemption. Hallelujah. It's terrible. People are afraid right now because nobody knows who is next. I pray for you. See, when the angel of death, hear me, when the angel of death came to Goshen and Egypt, the angel of death killed everybody. It's just that when he came, he found out that some houses were already killed. When he saw blood on their house, he said, these people are already died. And he passed by. I pray, that blood of sprinkling, that blood, he said, when I see the blood, Rapato Koparatapa, not by accident, not by terrorism. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I command supernatural preservation. Receive it now. Supernatural preservation. Receive it now. Every lecturer in APU and in all the institutions in this town, Rakagagagagabakata. Palataka, because I already see the arrows of death on some lecturers the Lord is ministering to me and I'm seeing that between now and December 4 I see four other professors going but we stop it we change it in the name of Jesus we stop it we change it we stop it we change it we stop it He said the heaven of heavens the heaven of heavens belongs to the lord but the earth has he given now let me pray for you 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 have no covenant with death we are entering the ember months now hallelujah please see take seriously the things that happen here are you hearing me? Liver is the power of God that is bringing her up stage. It's a sign and a wonder. Just cover her. Hallelujah. Please, we're out of time. I want to pray for you. Lift your hands. See, listen. Hear me, those inside and outside. Never believe hear me please now and i don't want you to feel bad i know that there are a lot of people here that have had to lose loved ones we've stood by you but don't let the death of your loved one suddenly make you give room for satan and say he can ride into your family anytime are you hearing what i'm saying every time death is ravaging people god will summon the people and anoint men to lift up a cry I want to pray for you. Ember month is the time when people look at how many people just graduate from ABU. Going back, they die. Don't tell me that's the will of God. Some of you, as they are giving your parents work, that's it. If there is a shrine, there is a greater shrine. See, this is the speaking of altars. Every altar speaks us that the blood of Jesus speak get better things I want to speak on behalf of people lift your hands please because many of us travel there are some of us who are in business 
you travel to Lagos, you travel to Kotono. Some of you are moving around. Some of you are coming from different places. My Duguri, Joss, Bauchi. Come out of her now. Out. Out of her. Now. A very violent spirit. Lift your hands. Say after me, Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare that I am protected from the arrows that fly by day and the noisome pestilence. I declare that throughout this year, I have no covenant with the spirit of death. Say, death, hear my voice. I am an ambassador and in the name of Jesus the seal of the blood is upon me I am protected my family members are protected father in the name of Jesus I believe your word and I declare that I enjoy supernatural preservation in my going out and in my coming in say in my going out and in my coming in therefore i pray for you that as you have declared let your eyes live to see the experience in the name of jesus christ hallelujah hallelujah you've not given your heart to jesus please remain standing everyone here please remain standing hallelujah you have not given your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ this is a family this is where we are ready to introduce you to the love of your life the Bible says whoever will come to him he will in no wise cast away many of us have been struggling you've been struggling some of you are born again you've given your heart to the Lord truly but there are encumbrances pushing you away from God. Right now, please everybody stand. I know you've been standing. Please stand for one last time. Inside and outside, let's honor God. And let's honor the greatest miracle that is about to happen. Young and old, rich or poor, as you hear my voice, the Holy Ghost is going to be talking to some of you. And he's going to tell you it is time. The Bible says in the day that you hear his voice, harden not your heart. You've never given your heart to the Lord or you have found yourself derailing. I don't care what you have done. There is a home for you tonight. As everybody begins to appreciate them, I want you to leave your seat and come out right now. Everybody come out from outside. God bless you. Outside, sister, brother, don't sit back. People are coming. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Don't sit back. Don't wait for somebody to come. Please keep clapping, Koinonia. No devil will stop you. God bless you, sir. God bless you. They are coming. Please appreciate them. Don't sit back. There are a lot of you outside. God is speaking to you. Brothers, God is speaking to a lot of brothers outside. Don't let your friends stop you. Don't let your friends stop you. Keep coming. Keep coming. Thank God for the harvest. Keep coming. Keep coming. The devil that will stop you from being saved has been defeated. Keep coming. Keep coming. God bless you. We hope this message was a blessing to you. To do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well. Share it to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season 
it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain 